Let me uh put it as a main. Oh, question the what? Uh, question the who? Oh, this one, the champs underground mines. Nine percent exploration, dude. And I'm that's, not even at the desert. That, that's like even the content that came out like a long time ago, huh? Yeah, I only play Mondstadt, and I only play like this section, this, this, like this little. Actually, the ice one was not even part of it. Mm. And then they added the eyes. Then they added Inusuma, which is all the way over here at the bottom. Yeah, and you have a lot of content. Yeah, I, ha I haven't done anything at all. Let me go to the main mission, though. Wanna see the story? I know the story was very good in this game. There's a road over here, so I suppose I just have to follow it. Yo, what's up, uh, John? What's up, Jesus? How do you run us like this? Let's play! Let's play. Oh my god, wouldn't glide and be faster? Shut up, bro. Wouldn't glide and be faster? No, it wouldn't. Adventure time! Uh, I like think you can get away? Teamwork is dreamwork. The wrong test subject. If I hold it square, or I actually right click in. Oh, I thought there was an option to get everything. Maybe that's on phone. I shall treasure this good fortune. Am I supposed to kill that? Don't run away. Okay. Keep running away. Looks like we can't explore any further. Hmm. Is there any way to open up this tunnel? Let's try breaking it. Nope, that's not gonna work. Huh. Gotta find a way to open the tunnel. Oh, the cannon, maybe. Oh, keep pressing the wrong one. Uh, how would you activate this? Let me check on top. Let me check more on top. <laughs> oh, there's a big guy. Don't, don't, dude. <laughs> nice. Here we go. Well, Oops. I forgot. Time uh. for takeoff. Everybody stand back. Uh. I guess this is it. Yep, that was it for you, buddy. Wait, L1 and hmm. I see something green over here and purple. Is that an enemy? Oh shoot. This thing bounces you off. Huh. Is it gonna blow up? Yeah, mm, it did. Okay, we gotta be careful with those things then. Maybe, maybe we don't have to go through there and I can go through the top. Yeah, seems like I'm going. What is this for? Loomstone not equipped. Huh. Could it be for this? No, maybe I, I'm supposed to have an, an item equipped. Uh, gadgets. This one. Equip. 
so it Oh, I can recharge stuff with it. Oh god. Uh, I forgot how to aim. There you go. I forgot how to aim. <laughs> oh shit. Oh face? shit. Yeah. Yeah. How do I aim, guys? Shut up, I forgot the controls. Yeah. I'm not gonna make it. No! Okay, I can do it though. I wasted half of the time. Huh? How do I get that energy? Maybe from this? Ah, oh, wait, I got it back, I think. Oh my god, I'm freaking stuck. That's it. There you go. That was a lot uh, better than first time. You heard the ballad of the treasure chest. There's a lot of enemies over here. Wait, it's a quest <laughs> from the Fatui. Why they're not talking? <laughs> Sorry to stop you if you're in a hurry. Wait, what? There's no audio. I thought there was, unless this is kind of like a side. Mm. I don't know. I'm all, I'm all seamers. Yeah. Surprise. I thought everything had like. Yeah, voice dialogue, acting. Yeah, voice acting. Dialogue. Yeah. Sorry to stop you if you're in a hurry. I'm Staff Sergeant Anton Melinkov, the acting CEO of the Nine Company. Just call me Anton. Okay. They are Danilia, Tamur, Radomir, and uh, Romanski. He's not here. He's at the medical camp. Neither Romanski nor the medical camp remains. Antoa Romanski didn't make it through the morning. Danila, how many times have I told you I'm in charge of the company now? Call me Staff Sergeant Anton. Ha, huh, in charge of the company? As a Staff Sergeant? Who do you think you are? Ever since the captain went missing, you've been acting like an important looking CEO, huh? That's enough, Temur. Your growing stomach must be, must be messing with your judgment. Calm down and preserve your energy. It's acting CEO on Toa. Acting CEO, my food. <laughs> okay. Just for how long do you have to take orders from this fake CEO who doesn't even know what he's doing? Hey, Temur, your brain must be intoxicated with hunger. I suggest you take a few punches to sober up. Sweets me. Go ahead. Come at me and I'll help you sober up too. Great, after running out of rations, we're also saying goodbye to our sanity and patience. Splendid. Draining every last ounce of energy we have here. What an enlightened course of action. <clears throat> Silence. If you're itching for a fight, then go down and fight the monster that came from the Black Mod. And don't you forget to fight them with your grow growling stomach too. If we want to leave and walk out of here alive, we must stick together. Don't make me repeat myself, okay? All right, give me an if not us, then who? One, two, three. If not us, then who? If not us, then who? She didn't, what well, the hell? They didn't say anything. He didn't say anything. <clears throat> so my friend, you must notice that we're not very combat effective as present. There's been a small issue. <clears throat> a small issue? You certainly talk like the captain. Since he's not here, I'm the acting commander. Now, why don't you shut up, <laughs> shut up the clever mouth of yours? <laughs> Sorry, my friend. We're in dire need of your help. Since when have we become friends? What do you want? Supplies, weapons, intel, or mora? We have plenty of them. Take them all if you like, so long as you help us. Ah, look. Our beggar CEO took on the most humiliating job ever. Losing the last ounce of dignity we were left without, with, with on our behalf. Knock it off already. Are you expecting to fill your tummy with bitter sarcasm? Join our ranks. Let us march in boot shake the earth like thunder. You who will march us. 
towards the polyster, polyster of the white knight, come, we shall never abandon you. Oh, someone shot him already. Uh, although they're bad guys, seeing them all famous certainly makes Paimon feel sorry for them. It shames to me to admit this, but as you can see, we're no longer combat effective in the last. All we want is some food. Oh, okay. No other agendas? We'll live and never return, I promise you. On the honor of the Nine Company, on our ancestors who defended the land of Sinitsnaya? <clears throat> oh, you poor thing. How famish, how pathetic. And out of that, you're not better anyway. Anyway, there's there were 64 of us when we arrived, 64 in total, and now there are only four starving souls left. What other purpose will we be capable of, capable of accomplishing? Wow, well, how did you end up like this? That's not the topic for now. Without food, the last low, the last four left of the nine company will be gone at any moment. Well, tell me your purpose first. Well, I'll say this. Whatever doubts you might have, the only purpose we have here is to investigate the source of the calamity in the chance. What calamity? Paimon seen no sight of it in this chance. The calamity that happened 500 years ago, it's only the beginning. The war against the dark has never stopped, and one of its battlefields is right beneath our feet. <laughs> Our staff sergeant Shio is so hungry that he's starting to talk some crazy stuff. He always likes to exaggerate, exa exaggerate, exaggerate, Ex exaggerate. But this is the first time he's talking nonsense. Forget it. What Anthony means is, well, that the people of Liu are no enemies to us. At least not in the op in this operation, not to us here in the Nine Company, but. I'm not so sure how our comrades who went missing might perceive that matter. Okay, I'll help you on the account of humanity, but just this once. Th thank you. We'll forever be grateful. Huh, for helping the bad guys, huh? Please consider our request. Well, here's the food you want it. Uh, I'll give him a chicken. Okay. Anton, you traitor! Have you for wait? Oh, they are actually no, no! I thought we were friends. You all suck. Take flight. Teamwork is dreamwork. No. Let's play. Wouldn't gliding be faster? Wouldn't gliding be faster? Wouldn't gliding be faster? Yes, it would, Venti. Oh my god, he's dead. What? Okay. I'm sorry, but there's a small issue with our chain of command. A small issue? We just betray we just betray our men by standing here as we watch someone else chase them off. Then what do you suggest we did? Let them beat us and have our food snatched away? Sip that mouth of yours shut and focus on eating. Oh wait, it was somebody else, it was not them. Until I stop downplaying this. Our chain of command has been wiped out. It's gone. Our, com 
our captains and other high ranked CEOs have either gone missing or got killed. That leaves us no other choice but to retreat. But many of our men refuse to do so. They'd rather hold on to what's left behind by our CEOs and fight until the last man standing. I'd say it, starve. This is the last time standing according to the collaboration agreement. People out there are supposed to relate orders and supply us with food, but we haven't heard from them for a long time. We're loyal to the Fatui and Lord Havingers, as we should, but we're no fools. Anyone sensitive will have long suggested that we retreat under such circumstances. So then, what's your plan? Hmm, I know this isn't your concern, and I won't stop you if you want to leave, but we really offer off our debt and could use your help what do you want me to do i'm not supposed to tell you this but there are supply stations near the ground level all our supplies go through here i mean through there <laughs> and we sometimes get orders there too we sent a few men up for food but they haven't returned i can't afford to risk another trip no one has come down from the supply station for a long time either I hope you can check the situation there for me. Sure, I'll help. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but we need to know what's happening on the ground. Otherwise, any decisions we might make will be too rash. Okay, okay. You're starting to confuse Paima with all this convol convoluted talking? Convoluted talk? What does convoluted even mean? We'll look out for it when we pass by. Oh, this is actually part of the main mission. Interesting. I'm gonna tell you what it means in Spanish. Um, actually, no, it isn't. Is there no thing for Spanish for convoluted? I never heard of it. Hold on. No way it doesn't exist. Conjuración? Conjuración? Nah, hold on. That's like, eh? Nah, I don't think so. That's Compleja! Not... Complejo! Compleja. Ah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Interesting. I did check the map. I forgot. Oh, it's like Convoluted. This. Complicated. A convoluted way of describing a simple device. So, they could just say complicated. Oh, I can just teleport. <laughs> there you go. Y'all, y'all, y'all. What the? It's a city? The Pyman is talking about. Oh, in the air. Upside down? This is not what I was expecting. Stranger things! Wait, what was it again? The Defile statue? Yes, that's it! It's just like that. Just as strange, just as upside down, and just as spooky. In which case, maybe whatever's going on in the chasm really is connected to the Abyss Order. Chasm? Hmm. Oh, we gotta get to the bottom of this. Hmm. Well, I was not expecting that. The feeling is mutual. I certainly hadn't expected to meet you here either. Long Four years, Cindy. No What's up, buddy? Wait, but how did you suddenly end up here in the chasm? The chasm? So we're in the depths of the chasm, are we? Interesting. This is one place where I have never set foot before. Well, I have a lot of questions for you. I understand how you must feel. Last time we met suddenly and parted hastily. Now our paths cross again. Fate, it seems, owes you an explanation. Well, first, uh, tell me why you're doing here. That much should be self-explanatory. I came upon the trail of another Abyss Herald recently and began pursuing it. Unfortunately, I got as far as cornering him before he resorted to the same trick that they all do. 
I was hot on his heels when I followed him through the portal, but as usual, it was to no avail. It took me to the wrong place. So you didn't actually catch up with my sister last time. Correct. Based on my recent experiences, I can only conclude that the Abyss's portals are not simply pathways from point A to point B, but gateways to an entire network. Where they emerge on the other side is their choice. It can be anywhere within the network. Sounds kind of similar to how teleport waypoints work. In short, though I was right behind your twin last time when I entered that portal, the next moment that I realized where I was, I was all alone, back in the ruins known as Storm Terror's Lair. Oh, yeah! About that! Whatever happened to the Eye of the First Field Tiller? It's in a safe place. You can be sure that I will learn the truth of the Loom of Fate operation sooner than it could ever fall into the Abyss Order's hands. Why don't you tell me who you really are? So that title stuck in your memory. I by no means went out of my way to conceal it from you. It once stood for the glory of Kanria, but now it is but a cruel joke. My curse to bear. Twilight Sword was my title as captain of the Royal Guards when I witnessed the destruction of my entire homeland firsthand. I believe my reluctance to raise it in conversation is quite justified. Sounds like your sister was right. What is the history between you and my sister exactly? We were travel partners. We both partook in a painful journey of searching for our fate. But regrettably, we did not make it to the journey's end together. The journey's end. Before you continue questioning me, I ought to warn you, if my suspicions regarding the portal network are correct, then the fact that there is a portal leading here tells us that the Abyss Order has their eyes on this location. You mean, the Abyss Order is plotting something here? Actually, Paimon and the Traveler suspected that too! I mean that it's highly likely that even as we speak, the Abyss Order is watching our every move. Giving Paimon goosebumps. Well, we should go and investigate. <laughs> A wise choice. Hmm. There appears to be light from a fire coming from near that rocky wall. Let's take a look. In fact, hold on. You still haven't told me what you're doing here. I doubt that most travelers would have any reason to venture down this way. We took a commission from the Adventurers Guild to investigate the chasm. Apparently a whole load of hilly churls have been gathering here, and the requester wants to know why. And now it looks like we finally found our first clue. Do you want the answer? Huh? You mean, you know something? As it happens, I do. Huh? Did I miss something? It's understandable that you did not perceive anything unusual. What makes this place so strange is that the environment here weakens the effect of the curse. Curse? Oh, Paima remembers! Last time you guys were saying that Conria's people were cursed to immortality or something. For centuries, I have suffered daily from the curse that was laid upon me. But here, I suddenly feel a small amount of relief from this suffering. And right here, right now, I can feel my body sending a strong message to me. It is telling me, stay. So, this place weakens the curse? That's pretty incredible. But how? 
That I shall need to investigate. But to the best of my knowledge, the Abyss Order does not have the technology to achieve this. So you're saying... Indeed. Do you know why Hilichuros wear masks? They've been cursed. I think so? It's to hide their appearance. Or am I? Lest they catch sight of their reflection in a body of water. Compared to how they remember themselves, it is a terrible sight to behold. One that causes them Wait. great despair. So these Hilichers really are from... The curse of immortality denies death to those afflicted with it. And yet, it does not truly mean that they will never die. Well, guess I was right after all. So... The Hilichers are freaking humans that got cursed? Hey. So, you mean... There's a way to undo it? <sighs> no. I mean that the body and soul will continue to be eroded until they are virtually non-existent. Even if death is not the form that this erosion takes. When the Hilichurls realize that the end is nigh for them, it seems their instinct is to seek out a calm and dark corner of the world in which to finally say goodbye to the centuries of suffering they have endured. And of all the places they could lay down to rest, one that can ease the effects of their curse would surely be their first choice. Wow. That's so... Conversation's over. Brace yourselves. <laughs> oh, somebody what attacked us? We're under attack. Yeah. Adventure... Huh? <laughs> Brace yourself. Think you can get away? Take flight. Embrace the ice. Huh? Everybody stand back! What were those? And why did they attack us all of a sudden? Black Serpent Knights. They once belonged to the Royal Guard of Kanria. Wait a second. Royal Guard? So, they used to be your troops? Yes, they were. But now, the curse engulfs them. And they fight with none of the honor they once had. Because they've become pawns of the abyss now? Let's continue on. Now we got pawns. <laughs> Wait, Dane! <clears throat> Seems we missed one. Wait, stand down. There's something different about this one. It's disappeared. What the heck? What was going on with that one? Was it trying to say something? How is this possible? How could he have retained self-awareness for 500 years without... it? But more importantly, why did he seem so familiar? Maybe he recognized you. That would be a miraculous outcome indeed for a cataclysm that brought total doom and destruction. Hmm. Or perhaps it was just a coincidence. We should press onward to the city. Imagine having to jump. Oh god, no. Looks like there's a strange energy surrounding the city. We can't go any further. Guess there should be a mechanism or something around here, right? Traveler, looks like it's time to get into ruin exploring mode! Postal time, huh? Don't waste your time. Yay! Thank you, no puzzle. Huh? Conria's technology, abyssal power. Two things I couldn't be more familiar with. They're just cheap tricks to me. Okay, so the Abyss Order really is trying to hide something here, right? Hmm. Dan seems like he really understands what's going on here. No wonder the Abyss Order doesn't want him around.
Was this upside down city built by Kenria? Not necessarily. The closer we draw, the more I am inclined to conclude that these ruins belong to a more ancient civilization still. The Abyss Order simply got to them before anyone else. Even older than Kanya? Whoa, Pyron can't even imagine back that far. That said, the architecture here does somewhat resemble that of Kanria. At least, it would if it were the other way up. Let's head toward the light over there. Mind your footing on the way ahead. It's a long way down. Yeah, you could fall, but... Wouldn't Gladdy be faster? Wouldn't Gladdy be faster? Imagine not having Venti. Uh. Oh shoot. <gasps> Black Serpent Knights. Is this where they're based? Or wait, are they guarding something here? We are likely drawing near to whatever the Abyss Order is trying to hide. Let's take them out first. Gotcha. Whirling snow. Oh. <laughs> Let's play. Time for retribution. Let's light it up. Here we go. Dreamwork is dreamwork. Time for takeoff. Yahoo! Should be able to climb up, right? Yep, I see them. I mean, you can climb everything, actually. Can you not? Oh my god, I fell. Wait, actually, no, I didn't. No, I did. It was these vines. Uh, R1. Oh, yeah, I could jump while climbing. Villagers, they might be dying. Hold on, I think they. No, they're not bad guys, they're just protecting the chili villagers. Oh god. Oh. Serpent Knights have nothing to do with the Abyss Order's secret. Huh. I should have guessed. Yeah, you're horrible at this, buddy. You're supposed to know it all. So, what exactly is going on with these Hilly Churls? As I said, for these Hilly Churls, the end is nigh. So the Hilly Churls are preparing to meet their end. They have grown old and fearful of the light, even become one with the darkness. And yet the curse continues to corrode them. Yeah, they're usually red, but these ones, these ones are black. But why would the Black Serpent Knights want to stay here and guard them? Oh, there's more. No. <sighs> more of them are closing in. We're no enemies. Let's let's try to avoid fighting them. Did he just order them to do that? 
Half Dan? Half Dan? He notes him. Whoa, whoa. What? You recognize him? Could it be? If it's as I suspect, then this is a truly tragic state of affairs. Dane? You want to know why they were gathered here guarding the Hilly Churls, don't you? It's because, as far as the Black Serpent Knights are concerned, they're simply doing their duty. The one who ordered them to retreat just now, I suddenly recognized him. I knew him as a young man, an elite in the Royal Guard of old. His name is Halfdan. So, he's from 500 years ago, too? To this day, I still remember the final orders. I, the Twilight Sword, gave to Halfdan on the day of disaster in Kanria, before I made haste back to the palace. Inform all Black Serpent Knights to protect the people of Kanria at all costs. Uh... Because we, of course, were royal guards. But this would mean nothing in the events that followed. Royals, gentry, common folk. These identities made no difference. Against the might of the gods, the only identity that mattered was being from Kanria. Hmm. These Black Serpent Knights have lost their intellect. But perhaps, in whatever remains of their minds, they are still protecting the people of Kanria. If you see these ruins as Kanria in the throes of disaster, and these hilly churls as the people crying for help, then suddenly I can make sense of what I'm hearing. Their growls are less of a threat and more of a warning. Then what are they saying? Though it is barely discernible, I can just about make it out. They keep repeating a word from the old language of Kanria. Run. So they're telling they're telling the hillichers behind them to escape. Even I have to admit, the fact their will is strong enough to survive 500 years of erosion. It is nothing short of a miracle, born from hopelessness. Oh, so Paimon had them all wrong. It doesn't matter. Even I took them for enemies for a moment. Let's keep heading toward the light at the top. I believe the Black Serpent Knights will no longer try to stop us. Well, they better not, because I'll kick their butt. Is there anything up here, though? Hmm. Wait. Maybe this way. What on earth am I? What is this though? Oh, some coins. Here we go. What in glad to be faster? Wouldn't glad and be faster? No, we wouldn't. Sure enough, we aren't seeing any more black serpent knights. Guess that half damn guy really did recognize Captain Dane, huh? Will this flip the whole building? No. How am I gonna get this? <laughs> can I even? Oh, yeah, I can. I see that I have to go over there, but I don't think I can make it. Hmm. Supposed to gotta climb, but what if? I use Benty instead. Yahoo! There you go. So easy. 
to the center. Is there anything at the bottom first? I see something blue, but I don't think it's it. it. Hey, why so quiet? I'm just thinking, nothing more. If you're trying to console me, I can assure you there is no need. I mean, I could always kill them. <laughs> nah, I'll be messed up. Though, can you? His graphics are insane. <laughs> be part of the entire city structure a relic of this ancient civilization and more importantly it is the very thing that is weakening the curse here my whole body feels more at peace than it has in a long time the effect is stronger here than it was before and I think it's because that water pool has something akin to a cleansing effect cleansing? Water in that pool can wash away the curse for good? No, that would be impossible. How are you so sure? Yeah. I have lived with this curse for 500 years, and I have been fully conscious the entire time. Suffice to say, no one understands the curse like I do. It is a way of branding us at the level of the fate of the world itself. When a god applies a curse, it takes effect at a higher level of reality than the person themselves. Even now, I can feel the curse slowly permeating my entire being, becoming part of me, slowly but surely replacing me. Perhaps it may be possible to suppress the corrosive effect of the curse for a time, but cleansing it entirely? Consider it tantamount to burning away an integral part of your body. It is not a process that one could ever hope to survive. Huh? Cleansing the curse cost you your life? Whoa. An irreversible curse. Paimon can't even imagine. In any case, I can feel that the water's cleansing effect is not nearly potent enough. At most, it might suppress the curse, but a little. Hmm. So, what's that contraption there? It looks kind of out of place. Looks like an abyss order device. Frankly, I have never seen a device of this design before either. It is not unreasonable to suspect that it could belong to the abyss order. But what could they be planning to do here? I wonder. Let's just go press it. <laughs> well... Haftan, do you have something to say to me? Maybe he has something to show you. He ran off, but he didn't disappear like last time. He's indicating that we should follow him. Are you coming? This could be a useful lead. True. So, uh, we going then? 
Hell yeah. Can I press it? No. <laughs> okay. I have to try. Uh, I want to see here first. That's the waypoint that I got already. Okay. Looks like Halfdan disappeared at the far end of this path. Perhaps whatever lies ahead is what he wants us to see. Let's keep going. Bet. We got more signs of electrical activity here. My apologies. Oh, it's a square. I forgot about that. What is this for? Is there a third one that I'm missing? And it's for a chest. Not interested. <laughs> Eagerly, sir. Please don't it's a humble out. hilly churl camp. Oh, these hilly churls look like they're in pretty bad shape, too. Some of them look like they've already taken their final breath. Is this what Afton wanted to show us? Whether it is or not, everything here is worth investigating in detail. Inspect the area, leave no stone unturned. have no life left in them at all before long they'll become one with the darkness the hilly churls we meet in the wild are always so rowdy paimon never would have imagined that this is how they spend their final days we may not have a whole lot of happy memories dealing with hilly churls but still paimon hopes they're at peace in their last moments Hilly churls usually store food in crates like these, right? But they seem pretty much empty. Is it because they're so near to the end that they don't need to eat anymore? Hmm. Even if they don't need to eat anymore, my mom bets they still miss food for the flavor. There's even a bonfire here. Like what hilly churls built in the wild! Wait, but wasn't Dane saying that hilly churls get scared of the light when they reach the very end of their lives? Hmm. Maybe, in the very, very end, they still want to feel some light and warmth. Oh. Uh, just thinking aloud here, uh, could also be another reason. No, maybe to cook the food they do not have. Flour? How did that flower get this far underground? Did someone bring it in memory of the deceased hilly churls? I know this flower? Hey, now that you mention it, Paimon thinks it looks kind of familiar too. From who? It is the national flower of Kanria. The Intivat. It once bloomed all over the nation. It would only last two weeks before wilting. But if you were to pluck one and take it out of Kanria, the petals would stop growing and turn hard. Only when it finally returned to its home soil would the petals grow soft once more and finally turn to dust. So the Intivat is a symbol for a wanderer far from home, signifying the tenderness of the homeland. 
Oh, that's the flower my sister was wearing in her hair. <gasps> so for this flower to get here, it must have been brought from... In focusing single-mindedly on confronting the heavenly principles, we neglected our original mission, the revival of the homeland. I should not have been so indecisive. The device is almost ready. We await your command. What are the chances of succeeding? Theoretically speaking, uh, approximately... Forget it. Even a 1% chance is enough. For too long have we dwelt in the Abyss. Surely they would rather return to the natural cycle of life and death as soon as possible than continue to exist as they are, without a shred of dignity. They cannot be made to continue paying the price for those so-called sins. The Order is most fortunate to be graced with your decision. You mean? Oh, he speak? No way. You saw something, didn't you? Can you tell me what it was? Yeah, you zoned out for quite a while there. Huh. Well, people do say that twins have a special connection. It sounds as if they are attempting to make use of certain equipment to cleanse the curse. It could well be the device we saw earlier. And you say she mentioned the revival of the homeland, correct? Yes. No surprise there. Stubborn as ever. It appears as if the Abyss Order plans to use this location to cleanse the Hilly Churls of their curse and restore them to the way they once were. Then... They will serve as the foundation for reviving the nation of Kanria. After all, there can be no nation without a people. Do they have a chance? <laughs> it is the height of foolishness. They have no chance of success, not even a 1% chance. I told you already that no one knows this curse better than I, having lived with it for 500 years. There is no redemption. There is no undoing the curse. Oh no, we do not let Diluc hear that. There's always redemption. Trying to remove it by force will achieve nothing but to inflict further suffering. So make sure you are clear in your mind. You have to tell yourself, they are no longer human. If you cling to false hope and allow yourself to become too emotionally invested, the only way is down. You will end up just like them. Mired in hypocrisy. Save your strength for something worth saving. And why should I believe you? Oh? Oh? <laughs> <laughs> but of course. I am merely someone you hired for a task. While she is your sister. It is only natural for you to side with her. Dude, you did not say that. That's messed up. But whatever decision you make cannot deter me from mine. My chosen path is to stop the Abyss. If we have reached an impasse, then perhaps this is where we should say... No. I choose to believe you. But that doesn't mean I completely trust you. I see. A 1% chance of redemption.
to make the choice of another living being behalf. Especially not when these hill chairs. It seems that the three questions I put to you on our first meeting were worthwhile. You have developed your own individual views on this world. Very well. Since you have volunteered your true thoughts on this matter, I shall not hide mine from you. Right now, I have a more immediate agenda than stopping the Abyss. That is to say, the Abyss's actions here directly dishonor the final wishes of Halfdan and my other compatriots. I cannot allow this to proceed. Then let's stay together for this one time. The Abyss may appear at any moment. Be on your guard at all times as we proceed. Alrighty. Guy Lizard, no. We can see the upside down city from here, too. Wait, watch out. <laughs> Blind it. The mutation is continuing. Has the abyss made its move already? Jane Smith, I see your incessant meddling continues, and that you have once again joined forces with our highness's kin. Regrettably, I was not in time to control your exit from the network, and it sent you here of all places. <laughs> this was a catastrophic error. <laughs> I am surprised that you dare to face me. You ran like a coward last time. Our Highness's will must be done. All interferences must be removed, whatever the price to pay. This time, the curse that torments our people must be undone, once and for all. You are the only ones who torment them. There is nothing else left of those hilly churls. Nothing besides the curse itself. Say what you wish. I am going nowhere, Dainsliff. Then you will give your life just to delay the inevitable. How absurd. But since you wish to persist, then so be it. You really think you can use that device beneath the pool to cleanse this curse? Do not underestimate the weight of the abyss. Then I overestimated you. This plan is even cruder than oh I God. thought. Oh. Let's light it up. Oh my God, I missed that. Think you can get away? What if you freeze? Yeah. There's no time to celebrate. The Abyss Order's device is activating, but there's still time to destroy it. All right, let's go! You gotta make it back. I believe it will be faster if I use the teleport on top. Yeah. Oh, they actually have a fog. Well, I think I should go through it. Yeah, made it. Oh, there's another one. Oh, cinematic. Look, the amplification device. <gasps> Is it actually gonna cure them? Even he's getting hurt. Am I too late? 
They're in agony. This is no way for them to meet their end. Find a way to stop that thing. I thought he would have been turned to ashes in an instant. Halfdan's soul is extraordinarily resilient. Meddling fool! Encumber us no more! Don't you have a greater encumbrance to worry about? Come on! This is your grand opportunity to get rid of me! Take him out and deactivate the device! Oh yeah, just watch. The abyss. Let's play. Let's play. The gift of grace. Off we go. The teamwork is dream work. Time for takeoff. How rude. Let's play. Sacred world. Thy holy proclamation! Time for retribution! Power. Power. Revelation! Oh, shoot. Let's light it up! Here we go! Whirling snow! Ye, the word of joy! Grace be upon you! Oh, he's sick of my freaking... Energy, that sucks. And hope find the power of revelation. There. The truth shall set you free. Let's light it up. Here we go. Clancy won't have any effect on me. No. As long as the device is active, the cursed are rendered powerless. Only you can take on the abyss. If you value his sacrifice, then do not waste any more time here. <laughs> See all these rays of light and portals. They must have installed several of these energy devices in various locations. Find them quickly. So we have to go through these abyss portals? Paman, we have no time. Hurry up. Oh, shoot. Oh. Whirling snow. I'm going in. Yahoo. Take flight. Thirty thousand. Let's go, D. Look. I'll break this crap. Really, trolls are really suffering. Quick, destroy the devices and put an end to the hilly 
Oh, she was just speaking. Suffering! We got Sephira. 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 Did I feel like he should be like in every, every game? game. <laughs> every game. <laughs> he just appears out of nowhere. Oh shit. Yeah. Time for takeoff. Take flight. Verdict is. Freaking crazy how I stopped playing this game like two years well, well like since it started and mm -hmm. I'm still rocking with the same characters that I had before. Yeah, I mean it's not pay to win, right? No. Like, you, you could beat it with any no, characters. Like obviously some are a little bit better than others, right? A but lot better apparently, but yeah. But it like these things are so old and they're still like doing the, the stuff. Yeah. It's cool. Like the overpowered thing is not that much like in other type of gacha games. We go, everybody stand up. They're like if you stop playing for a year you come back, all your units are worthless. Sakura swirl! Whirling snow! Retribution! Yes, definitely. Uh, damn it, if I knew I had to do this, I would have chosen another portal that was closer. But I'll be fine. Glad it'd be faster. Wouldn't gliding be faster? Hell yeah! Oh it would. my god! <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would, Venti. He said it, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Jesus. god! He's amazing. That's crazy. Don't you ever stop saying that, Venti. The best. The burning sensation has indeed stopped. So, we managed to stop the Abyss Order's plan? But, how then? <sighs> Let me check. Dane must be really upset. Of all the ways to be reunited with one of his former comrades after so long. This is rough. <sighs> Let's go. Huh? Uh. Huh? Light? <gasps> oh, they have the same eyes. <sighs> Apologies, Captain Dainsliff, Twilight Sword. Back then, I failed you. It failed to protect our people. <laughs> no. For 500 years, you have faithfully done your duty. To this day, I am proud of you all. <sighs> Conria didn't fall, did it? Since you're still here. Correct. No. So, no need to revive the homeland. That was half and soul. More than one kind of strange power exists here. Souls are no strange sight under the circumstances. Still. 
If you intend to venture deeper in and continue your investigation, you ought to be careful. <coughs> hmm? You bet. We'll be super careful. Oh, but dang, does this mean you're not coming with us? Why was he coughing? That device took a severe toll on me. It will take me some time to recover. Huh. Oh, right. Well, actually, Baimon already knew that. You've clearly been pushing through the pain this whole time. You've earned a good rest, Dane. Oh, you should take a vacation! Vacation? <laughs> the very notion. This word has no business being in my vocabulary. There are more important things that demand my attention. The Loom of Fate operation is still underway, and I suspect that these amplification devices are connected to that plan. I'll be on the lookout. Thank you for understanding. I only hope that next time we meet, you know whose side you're on. Ah, uh, dang, I'm so sorry. Sheesh. He sure knows how to hold a grudge. Saving that snide remark right until the end. I know, right? He just waited to tell me that. Well, shame that we didn't get to see your sister again. But at least we learned some useful info, huh? Mm -hmm. As long as you keep pressing on with your journey, you guys will definitely meet again, and everything will be back to normal, right? Uh, right. Oh, Paimon almost forgot. The real reason we came here was to investigate what was going on with the hill churls, wasn't it? We've probably seen enough to report back to the miner now, but uh, how are we going to explain it to him? This is all way too complicated for regular people to understand. Uh, eh, we'll figure it out. Just don't forget about the commission when we're done here. Breaking of the egg going... I don't know what the last thing said. A forest of change. What's the next main quest though? Chapter 3, Act 1. This is a new chapter. Through mist of smoke and forest dark. Go to the land of the Dendro Archon. You and Paimon arrive in Somaru and you prepare to find a way to get an audience with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Quest going Somaru? Uh. Wait, what? Oh, should they? What is all of this? <laughs> Dude, why is the map so big? For the people that start playing this game, there's gonna be so much, so much content. content once no. the whole game is done. Because I think they're still missing like three areas or four, something crazy like that. They don't even know how to make it over here. <laughs> Where am I? Please, please head to Teva. Uh, where's Teva? Uh, may maybe, maybe it's on top. Yui, Liri. Huh? I'm gonna go check over here. Guess it seems like it's not. Underground, for what I could see. Two hundred meters. Then I'll have, I'll have to look at a freaking guide how to make it to Sumeru. That's no idea. This is new. I never seen it. Huh? 
Well, what are those things? Let's light it up. Ouch. Well, don't do the damage to them. Lower. No, don't tell me that. Four leaf sigil. This crest, which looks like a four petal flower, will sometimes appear in Sumeru. When those who can manipulate the elements are facing one such crest, then can use it to travel swiftly. Swiftly? Swiftly, yeah. Sometimes you will find cluster leaves of cultivation that can scatter these four leaf sigils around. Use their ability to make your adventures. Easier. Oh. Okay. I'm guessing I can meet the point over here. Right? In fact, this seems more like the en entrance. Oh, so from the chasm, you can make it over here, right? Let me go check, but I truly believe so. Yeah, this is the chasms. Oh, that's cool. I wonder if it's because it's been a long time that they allowed you to go through the top and not actually follow the whole freaking chasm place. Because I don't feel like exploring that whole area. <laughs> that's so much. Well, I could, but I want to I wanna see the story first. Lord Kusanali, even though we haven't heard too much about her, she doesn't seem to be the same deity who abducted your sister. But even so, people call Sumeru the Nation of Wisdom, you know. If we can get a chance to meet the God of Wisdom, maybe she can give us some useful information. All right, sounds like a plan. But uh, Paimon doesn't know the way to Sumeru City. Maybe we can climb up to that spot with the Statue of the Seven on it. That'll give us a way better view of things. Even if we can't see exactly where the city is, at least we'll be able to check for some smaller settlements nearby. That's a very good idea, Paimon. But who the hell is Wait that a person? Second. Look! There's someone up ahead! Perfect timing! Now we can just ask for directions rather than wander around like lost adventurers. Hey there! <laughs> We're not from around here and seem to have gotten a little lost. We'd like to ask for some directions. Huh? Uh, did they not hear Paimon? Hey! You over there! Could you give us some directions? Huh? Oh. Uh. What's going on here? There's no way she could have missed that. Oh, wait! Could she be ignoring us? How dare she? Calm down, there's probably nothing to get worked up about. Hmm. Well, even so, she might be heading someplace where we could find other people to ask. Let's keep our distance and follow her. When we get the chance, we'll just ask someone else for directions. Let's follow her. Just keep quiet. Make sure she doesn't notice us. Oh, I didn't press it in time. Nice. Here we go. The world opens itself before those with noble hearts. Hey, well, that's the Sumer City. Huh. 
Huh? What were those? Carlos, did you see them? Yeah, I saw them. Littering around, plant like things, right? Gone just like that. We should ask around when we get a chance. Sure. Now, where's the other lady that ignore us? Let's give it another shot. All right then. It's not like we have anyone else we can ask. Even if she's not very friendly, we just need her to point us in the right direction. That's all. Oh. Mm. What a oh, lovely no. smell. Don't you ever freaking think about food anymore. It's coming from that sensor over there. This is definitely not your typical place to call home, but at least it smells nice. Mm. Maybe living here wouldn't be too bad after all. Uh, uh, huh? What's the matter? You don't look too good. Something is not right. What? Is the smell making you feel sick? Strange. Paimon doesn't feel anything. I've got to get out of here. I think... I'm gonna pass out. What's Drop to the floor. Traveler? This is no time for a nap. Oh, come on. Let's go. Whoa, what the hell? How the hell am I here? What is this place? Looks amazing. Whoa, bro. If he says that he's going to be all right, then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh, are you awake now? Oh, thank goodness! Traveler, you're finally awake! Where... where am I? Well, we're at... Uh... Good question. Where are we? Hyman was in such a panic when you passed out that she even forgot to ask what place this is. This is Gandarverville. It was originally built by scholars from Sumeru as a place to rest in the rainforest. Now it's mainly used by the forest rangers as a base of operations. My name is Kale. I'm a trainee forest ranger. My master and I found you passed out during our patrol, so we brought you here. Well, thank you for your help. Oh, no, no thanks are necessary. I didn't do anything, really. By the way, how are you feeling now? Any discomfort? No, I, I seem to be fine, except... Oh, 
<laughs> That's Master's herbal medicine you're tasting. He gave you some while you were unconscious. Uh, before I forget, Master mentioned you should take more medicine once you wake up. Oh, nice, Coley. Coley, uh, what's the matter? Were you trying to retrieve the medicine? As I've already told you, you must be careful with these. I'll get it for you once I am finished here. Uh, sorry, Master. <sighs> now, the guide to Avidia Forest's edible fungi is clearly posted on our bulletin board, but if Farbode forgets which mushrooms to avoid one more time, I'll have no choice but to leave the guide somewhere a little more visible. Like, right smack on his forehead so others can remind him to be careful. <laughs> right? This is the second time he's come down with food poisoning this month. I'll be sure to give him a good talking to. Yes, please do. If, on the off chance, Farbode simply enjoys having little imaginary fairies dance before his eyes, then we'll just let him be. But, the next time he requires any of our medicine, be sure to charge him accordingly. So, how are you doing? Feeling better? Oh, this is my master! Forest Watcher Tainari. He is chief officer over all the rangers here in Gondarvaville. I already informed Paimon about the reason you fell unconscious earlier. But now that you're awake, let me explain it for you as well. It is common practice for Sumeru scholars of certain Darshans to dedicate themselves to training and meditation in isolated areas, particularly the nearby forests. While meditating, they use a certain incense known as Spirit Borneal to help calm their minds as they enter a state of deep rumination. In hopes of asking directions, you two followed a scholar named Hapasia into her cave. The incense you smelled inside was the Spirit Borneal I just mentioned. That incense typically has no effect on most people, but for a very select few, it can have profound effects on one's cognition, as you experienced firsthand. Does that make sense? Yeah, that all makes sense. Very good. Now, answer me this. Did you feel anything after passing out? Say, any out-of-body experiences? Or did you see anything while unconscious? Uh... Yeah, actually, I did. Hmm. Kale? Let the others know to stop bringing their patrol logs here for now. Huh? Wh why Because these two will be staying here for the next few days. They can have my room and I'll bunk with Amir. Now get a move on and be sure to do as I've said. Yes, Master Tainari. Uh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, can you tell us what's going on? Sure, let me fill you in. I originally planned to send you on your way once you finished your medicine. However, it appears now that you should stay a while longer in Gandarvaville for further observation while you recuperate. Hmm. Further observation? But we need to go to Simmer City. No need to be hasty. As long as you have the capacity to judge between right and wrong, I promise that you'll understand the gravity of the situation once I explain everything to you gravity of the situation based on what you saw after smelling the incense and losing consciousness we can conclude that you experienced a powerful hallucination which suggests your mental state is not in the best of shape oh nice thank you if you're skeptical have a whiff of this what oh are you okay you're experiencing a similar sensation as when you passed out aren't you so even though your condition is stable as of now, if I were to haphazardly let you leave, it's highly likely that you'd suddenly pass out again somewhere else. The rainforest is home to many fierce animals and hazardous areas. If something were to happen to you again, I'm afraid you might not be so lucky. For now, I suggest you continue taking your medicine each day and avoid wandering off on your own, at least until you stop having adverse reactions to this kind of smell. Okay. All right. Hmm. Good. 
Now, continue resting while I fire up another bowl of medicine for you. <sighs> Seriously? We just arrived in Sumeru and we're already having problems left and right! <laughs> I know, right? So true. Lima knows we're set on meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali as soon as possible, but you really don't look too good. It'd probably be best to let you recover first. Uh, hey! Are you even listening to Paimon? Paimon's over here worrying about you, you know! I feel... it's a little weird. What's weird? You mean how you're feeling now? I don't think what I saw were hallucinations. You mean the vision of tree roots and red skies you saw? But if those were hallucinations, what could they be? I'm not sure. When I saw the visions, it felt like as if I was standing deep underground. But the red sky? Could it have been Canary? Well, considering how unique you are, Paimon trusts your judgment here. But why didn't you say anything about it to Tainari? If you misjudge your condition, then there's a chance you could get worse, right? He probably wasn't telling us the truth. Huh? You mean that Tainari already knows that what you saw weren't hallucinations? Like, if that's the case, why would he try to hide that from us? Exactly. We need to get to the bottom of this. Oh, Paimon gets it now. That explains why you were so quiet earlier. Well, that settles it then. We'll stay here to rest up and figure out what's going on with your hallucinations. But it seems like asking Tainari might not be an option anymore. <sighs> what do you think we should do? Let's start by having a chat with Kali. Good idea! Kali's pretty friendly. We can ask her tomorrow about what she knows regarding the Dendro Archon and customs in Sumeru. Sleep, sleepy. Rise and shine! Come on, it's time to go find Kali! Oh shit. <laughs> Alright, next let's see your right hand. Hmm, not bad. Uh, but please remember that you still need to be careful, understand? <sighs> yes, I will. By the way, Master, I still haven't received the patrol route for today. Look, Kale, today's patrol will be a long one, so you won't be coming along this time. Besides, there's a chance we may encounter... Well, you understand. They're hiding something from us. But I have a vision too! <sighs> Am I useless to everyone now? Don't talk like that, Kale. This is not something you need to be worrying about right now. Ah, there you are. Uh, feeling any better? Is there something we can help with? Yeah, since we'll be staying here for now, we thought we might as well try lending a hand around here. <laughs> Seems you're not the type to sit back and take it easy for a while, huh? Hmm, in that case, uh, perhaps Kale could take you two for a patrol south of Gundarvaville for the day. And if you're feeling up to it, you can be responsible for cleaning the Statue of the Seven. Tenari, we're ready to head out. Got it! I'll be right there! Alright, we'll be heading into the forest now. I'll leave any further details to Kale. Yes, you can count on me. So, Kale, what exactly are we going to be doing today? Tenari mentioned cleaning the statue just now, but, uh... That doesn't really sound like the job for a ranger. Well, a forest ranger's responsibilities can be pretty diverse. They handle a variety of tasks, like checking the condition of outlying roads, maintaining forest facilities, ensuring fire prevention standards are met, and providing assistance to travelers and locals. As for Master, well, he has to handle more dangerous areas of the rainforest. Today we can perform routine checks on the pathway lamps, as we make our way to the Statue of the Seven. Paimon, Traveler, this way! I just noticed. You can leave the task of checking the lamps to me. In the meantime, you two can keep an eye out for anything unusual. 
What did you notice? There are like, I guess, voice acting. It's very decent, if not good. But on like the shows, it's bad. How is that like a thing? What the hell? How do you... Do I have to click it? Mm, I suppose I do. I'm not trying to search for achievements. Oh my god. Something is messed up. No. It's not a lamp. Nothing wrong with these two lamps. Let's move to the next ones. The city above the forest added to the archive. Archive? Archive? Archive. Huh. Seems to be getting a little wobbly. Let me make a note of it. Hmm, no problems with this lamp. Good. The statue of the Seven is up on top of that large rock formation. You must have seen it when you came down this road before. It's pretty high up there, isn't it? Don't worry. If you're afraid you can't make it up there, I'm sure Master wouldn't mind if you don't clean the statue. Oh, no need to worry. I'm a terrific climber. Oh? I guess I'll leave it up to you then. There's not much footing once you reach the statue, so be careful up there. Kinda will fly up with you and help you with those hard to reach areas. Alright. Um, by the way, Kale, do you know anything about the Dendro Archon? You know, What's she like? Uh, that depends. Are you referring to Greater Lord Rukudavata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Greater Lord Rukudavata? Oh, is that the name of the former Dendro Archon? Uh-huh. Greater Lord Rukudavata was Sumeru's first Dendro Archon. She created the rainforest as well as the Wall of Samiel around the desert. Her works provided a means of peaceful living for everyone. To the people of Sumeru, she's not only a symbol of wisdom, but also of power and kindness. Unfortunately, she disappeared in a great calamity that occurred a few hundred years ago. Sounds exactly like what happened to Raider Makoto. According to what Master has told me, the sages later found the newly born Dendro Archon and whisked her back to Sumeru. To celebrate the reinstatement of their lost deity, the sages dubbed her Lesser Lord Kusanali and let her reside in the sanctuary of Sarasana. Uh-huh. Then what happened? Well, and then... Uh... Uh... I'm not too sure what happened, to be honest. Huh? You're not too sure? But aren't you from Sumeru? Yeah, I'm from Sumeru. Uh... But... Maybe it's difficult to discuss this topic with strangers. If that's the case, then don't worry, we understand. No, what's up, no, Dylan? What's up, Karen? That. I'm not trying Corona? to hide something from you. Besides, I don't consider you two strangers. <laughs> because you two know Amber, right? Yeah, we do. Wait, Amber? You mean... Amber? Outrider of the Knights of Avonius? Yes, that's her. I once lived in Mondstadt for a while, and she helped me a lot during that time. You could even say that she helped me become a new person. Dang. <laughs> There's no one like Amber. She lives life to the fullest while always adhering to her strong sense of justice. She's ready to answer the call for action at any moment, but is also very understanding of others. She's like the spark that lights the fire in everyone's heart around her. If you ask me, she's a prime example of a true outrider. She's the first person anyone coming to Mondstadt will meet. You can't help but be enthralled by her charm and enthusiasm. 
causing you to fall in love with the lands of Mondstadt and... Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Whoa, never seen the side of you, Kali. Uh, I haven't thought the work of Outriders was a little different from what you just described, but to one thing's for sure, you really like Amber. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I was rambling on just now. It must have sounded kind of weird. <laughs> it's all right, Kale. Knowing that you're a friend of Amber somehow makes Paimon suddenly feel a lot closer to you. So, how do you know that we've met Amber? Well, after I returned to Sumeru, Amber and I have stayed in touch by writing each other letters. In one letter, she mentioned that Mondstadt was attacked by a fearsome dragon, but the city was saved by a mysterious blonde traveler and their floating companion. I knew you two were the ones she mentioned in the letter the moment I saw you. But, uh, considering everything you've been through that day, I thought it'd be inappropriate to bring it up. Ah, so that's how you knew. Yep, so please know that you two have my complete trust, really. I wish I could tell you more about the Dendro Archon, but I have been away from Sumeru for some time, and I haven't read any books. Sorry. That's all right. You've already helped us a lot. We had never even heard of Greater Lord Ruka Devata or the Sanctuary of Surathana until you mentioned them. Oh, I'm happy that was helpful. There is one thing I want to ask, though. Why do you two want to know about the Dendro Archon? Hmm. So that's why you're here. Thank you for telling me your story. Don't mention it. We are friends after all, right? Paimon's right. We're friends. <laughs> Alright, we have a statue to clean. You both have True. my thanks. While you two are up there cleaning, I'll go ahead and inspect the forest canopy. Let's meet back here shortly. at it, the deity that's carved on the statue is kind of small. Hmm. Do you think she's supposed to be Greater Lord Ruka Devata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? Maybe Greater Lord Ruka Devata. You might be right. The statue does look kind of old. Hmm. Well, anyway, we'll have to figure that out later. Let's get started on cleaning the statue. Paimon will fly up and take care of the top and you clean everything below. Nice work. That's one clean statue. Let's head down and meet up with Kale. Charlie, we're back. Welcome back. You must be tired after all that climbing. Let's take a little break. I brought some fruit and water for us. Yay, food! What kind of goodies did you bring? Pie, Mom. Some restraint, please. Hey, don't be a party pooper. It's not like Kale is a stranger or anything. Besides, the best way to compliment a chef is to show passion for their food. Xiangling taught Paimon that. Did you just call me party pooper? Get out of here, Paimon. I prepared a nice portable dish that forest rangers like to eat called pita pockets. I hope you'll like them. Pita pockets. <laughs> Interesting name. Hot pockets. Uh, wh whoops! Ah, no! You dropped it on the ground! Not to worry. I wrapped a few layers of oiled paper around each pita. They should be fine. Oh, I'm nearly had a heart attack there. Those pitas are amazing. You're quite the cook, Kale. Thank 
goodness you wrapped them in paper. Hana wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing something so tasty had been wasted. <laughs> you really know how to compliment the chef, Paimon. Since you liked it so much, I'll be sure to give you a copy of the recipe sometime. I'll even include all my personal cooking pointers, so you'll be making your own pita pockets in no time. Yay! Thanks, Kale! It's hard to believe someone as diligent as you could have clumsy moments, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess it happens from time to time. So, uh, Kale, don't you think that Tainari's a little too strict with you? He won't let you touch anything without his permission. Paimon knocks stuff over all the time flying around the Traveler, but he's never said anything. Everyone has their clumsy moments. No, no, you've got the wrong idea about Master. Uh, <laughs> sure, he may seem a bit harsh at first, but with some time, you'll see that he's actually very kind-hearted. I've heard the veteran rangers say that Master is from some ancient and mysterious race that is known for their cunning wit and reclusive nature. But Master's actually very kind at heart. Oh, by the way, you've heard of the Academia, right? Well, there's a group called... Uh... Um... Um... Uh... Um... Boo... Something? <laughs> nice. Well, anyway, because Master does a lot of research on plants, sages from the Academia have written him many times, inviting him to take up an official position there. But Master declines their offers every time, saying, Sumeru City is too noisy. It'd be bad for my ears. That does sound something like, uh, Technari will say. <laughs> Seems you already know him well. Anyway, I'm sure the sages were not happy about his responses. Master could obviously have a bright future in the Academia, but he insists on sticking to the path of a Forest Watcher. Every day, he helps the locals of the forest and passes on his extensive knowledge to trainees like me. In fact, Master's the one who taught me how to make pita pockets. Really? Paima would have never guessed that. Oh, speaking of Tainari, he was the one who took care of you after finding you passed out yesterday. He even carried you all the way here. Paimon's still kind of upset, though. He kept scolding Paimon the entire way here. What did you do? <laughs> Sorry, Master might have been overreacting a little. But, uh, it's mostly because Paimon wouldn't stop yelling, Why, oh why, is he going to die? It probably <laughs> started to get under Master's skin after a while. Hey! Don't laugh! Paimon was genuinely concerned yeah, about yeah, you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Hmm. No! Don't touch me! Huh? Oh, sorry, Kale. Paimon didn't mean to scare you. Uh, no, I, I just. I. I didn't mean that. Kale, are you okay? What's the matter? Noah! I'm... <laughs> I'm fine. I'm sorry. I must have startled you both reacting like that. Oh, well, it's getting late now. Uh, let's hurry back to Gundarverville. I think Master and the others should be back by now, too. Huh? What was up with Kari just now? And why is she in such a hurry all of a sudden? Look, she's practically running back. Paimon can't even see her now. Dude, she's walking back normally, Paimon. What are we talking about? Ha! Oh, god damn it. Ha. Huh. Traveler, you've returned. Yep, we're back. Kale by any chance? Oh, Kale? Yes, I saw her go into her room just a moment ago. Oh, okay. Guess we'll just have to wait and talk to her tomorrow then. Yeah, seems like it. I 
I think they had a thing so you could sleep. Uh. No. Once. Oh God. Glorious kingdom. That's the past. No. Nope. I still have a lot to do with the guild. No. How about you take a rest while I go Yesterday, back? The map maybe and then No. Reunion? Did somebody say reunion? Oh, double drop, huh? You should really bring the Knights of Favonius with you next time. No. 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 I swear there was a way to pass time. Oh, maybe in the options. Uh, time. There you go. Until eight. <laughs> It's you two. I was just about to go look for you. No way that. Huh? Tainari? What are you doing here? Where's Kale? I came to check on Kale's condition. To put it simply, she's not well. Hmm? You mean she's sick? How could she be... Oh, wait a minute. Could it be because of what Paimon did yesterday? No, no need to worry. Something as small as you could never harm her. This sickness is something that Kale has been dealing with for some time. Kale has been more excited than usual since you two arrived. A little too much so, to be honest. She hasn't remembered to take care of herself. <sighs> I suppose it's understandable, though. She hasn't been around anyone she considered a friend for some time now. It must have been refreshing for her to have you two here. So, Tainari... What's really wrong with Kale? <clears throat> Let's take this conversation elsewhere. Kale just fell asleep after taking her medicine. She needs some peace and quiet. Hmm. Okay. Did it go down here then? All right, let's continue our conversation here, shall we? To be honest, I hadn't realized you're that honorary knight from Mondstadt until Kale told me just now. I've also heard all about your deeds in Liyue and Inazuma. So just to clarify, what I'm about to tell you about Kale is not because of who you are or your past feats. Instead, I am going to tell you because... Hmm? Well, because Kale asked me to. And honestly speaking, I was against Kale revealing her past to you. <sighs> but she insisted, saying you two treated her with sincerity and as a friend. So now she wishes to reciprocate the gesture. So Tainari, what exactly is wrong with Kale? You said this is something she's been dealing with for some time. Just how serious is it? Right. Ever since she was a child, She's been afflicted with a disease called Elazar. Elazar? Elazar? 
Yes. It's a disease unique to the lands of Sumeru. It is characterized by dark and hardened scales that form on the body. At first, the afflicted may only feel mild numbness on affected areas of the skin. However, as the disease progresses, one may begin feeling fatigued and even experience peripheral paresthesia. In its final stages, the disease strips a person of the ability to control their own body, and they effectively become completely immobile. That sounds terrifying. They'll lose control. They'll lose all control over their body. Wait, hold on. So when Kale seemed to be acting a little clumsy earlier, it was because. Correct. That would be the effects of Elazar, which is precisely why I do not want her carrying or holding anything, lest she ends up hurting herself. So is there any cure for Elazar? With appropriate treatment, the disease can be effectively controlled before it progresses to a more serious stage. However, there is unfortunately still no true cure for Elazar. Nevertheless, Kale's mother still hoped that there was something out there. She handed Kale over to an organization known as the Fatui after one of their members lied and said they had a cure. What? Mm. The Fatui? Ah, it appears you already are familiar with them. That'll save me some explanation. Anyway, the person who eventually rescued Kale and brought her to me for care said that she had been given to a harbinger known as the Doctor. I have no idea how this Doctor managed to do it, but... Her case of Elazar was completely stable for all the years that Kale was with them. However, Kale's days with the Fatui were anything but pleasant. Kale is a resilient individual and always tries to appear cheerful, but her experience with the Fatui has left deep scars. Even now, she can still feel deathly afraid of someone touching her. Hmm, that's why. Oh, Paimon had no idea Kale's been through so much suffering. Oh, by the way, Paimon, uh, Kale wanted me to tell you that she's sorry for scaring you yesterday. She also wanted both of you to know that she's sorry for hiding her illness. She doesn't need to apologize. None of this is her fault at all. Hmm. Well said. I hope you'll get a chance to tell her that in person the next time you see her. Kale once thought that it would be impossible for her to have any real friendships. I trust that you two will never let my trainee experience such emotional pain again. Don't worry, Tainari. We'll take good care of her. So, how's Kali condition now? Well, it's not too serious at this point. She overexerted herself the last couple of days, which is what led her to break down this time. As long as she has taken her medicine and gets plenty of rest, she should get better. Though I must admit that Kale's condition was much more stable when she first arrived here in Gandarvaville. She was interested in the work of the forest rangers the moment she saw us. I could see that she was serious about learning, so I felt compelled to ask her to join us. Her stamina has gotten much worse recently. Though a moderate amount of physical exercise is always necessary, I'm afraid the long distance patrols are a little too much for her now. Alright, now that I've told you about Kale's past, I think I'll head into the rainforest to find some ingredients needed for her medicine. I'll see you two later. Wait, wait, can we come along? something to help Kale too. All right, but I must warn you too. The rainforest is a dangerous place, especially for someone who's still recovering, like the traveler. You must follow closely and listen to every instruction. All right. No problemo. Let's problemo. Go then. We'll be looking for a plant known as the Nilot Pala Lotus. It's often used to help those afflicted with Elazar recover their energy. All right. Nilot Pala Lotuses can be found all over the rainforest, but it often grows right here around Gandarvaville. Hmm. Given the name, it sounds like we should be looking for it in the water. You are correct. The Nilot Pala Lotus grows in the water. When fully matured, they look like giant blue flowers floating on the water's surface. Quite an attractive species, if you ask me. The large petals are actually the plant's leaves and sepals, which surround a very small flower. You should note that many of the plants found in Sumeru have names that are contrary to their species. Take the Kalpalata, for example. 
The plant is not a lotus at all, but rather a vine. And then there's the Sumeru Rose, which is not a rose and is completely contrary to its name. Oh! Nice. Uh, um, okay, then. You, Kapai, never bring up the topic of flowers with Kainari. Dormant Funga Nucleus. That's an item for new characters, I guess. Hmm. There should be Nilot Pala Lotuses growing somewhere in this area. Let's split up and begin searching. If you could manage to gather four of them, that would be sufficient. We'll rendezvous here once you've gathered the needed amount. Oh wait, I forgot about her. Let me have a look. Hmm, good. Very good. These are all excellent quality. I'm glad you two came along. Your exploration experience helped save me a lot of time here. It seems we even have enough time to stock up on other things I need. Hey, Tainari! Oh, Tainari! Someone's calling your name! They're dressed like a forest ranger. Ah, yes, that's Amir and the others. But didn't they just set off not too long ago? Hmm, what are they doing back so early? Let's go find out what's going on. Tainari, thank goodness we found you here. We were just about to head back and find you at Gandharvaville. What's going on? We just discovered a withering zone. The withering is back? But the patrol route you were on should have been already cleared just a week ago. It reappeared so quickly. Can you tell me the exact location? It's up ahead, deep in the river valley. It's appeared in a spot that blocks nearly the entire narrow part of the valley area, so we decided to come find you as quickly as possible. And the radius of the contamination? Sorry, I couldn't get a clear enough view to tell. No one in our patrol team had a vision, and it appeared to still be spreading, so we didn't risk getting any closer. Okay, I understand. You made the right decision. I'll go deal with it right away. In the meantime, Please guide these two back to Gandharvaville. Oh, hell no, we're helping you. Wait, Tainari, why don't you let us help you? You two have only just arrived in Sumeru. You're still unfamiliar with many things in these lands. There's a unique type of anomaly that occurs in the Sumeru rainforest. It's called the withering. The affected areas not only cause nearby vegetation to wither, but it's also lethal to wildlife and even people. If you don't carry a vision, then you should think twice before approaching such places. Yes, Amir is absolutely right. I wasn't kidding when I said the rainforest is a dangerous place. As Amir said, only someone with a vision, that is, the power to manipulate elements, will be able to resist the withering's corrosive effects for a time. That's right. If any of the forest rangers without a vision come across a withering zone, we first make a record of the location and then have a ranger with the proper abilities deal with it, like Tainari here. Only someone with a vision can venture within a withering zone and find a way to deal with it. Well, I can also control the elements. But you don't seem to carry a vision. Don't worry. He may not have a vision, but he's a real pro at using the power of the elements. Hmm. Seems the rumors about you were true then. In that case, all right. You two may accompany me. We typically only teach visitors how to identify the withering as they're about to leave Gandharvaville. We'll make an exception today and show you what it looks like up close.
stop. Don't move any further. Look there, in the distance. Huh? Where? Oh, look! Those plants have withered! That whole area is kinda gloomy. Even the air looks like it's filled with ash. Oh, Paimon doesn't like the look of this. That is the withering. All right, Traveler. We're gonna have to enter that withering zone. Once inside, we'll need to look for what we call Tumors of the Withering. If we eliminate those, then the area will be saved. Gotcha. Let's do this. Thank you. But I must warn you, don't push yourself. This is your first time handling this sort of thing, after all. I'll be alright. Even with elemental powers, once you step inside the withering zone, you may experience extreme discomfort. If at any point it becomes too much, return outside the zone and take a breather. It could become a matter of life and death. You ready then? Let's go. Hmm. First, we must locate any branches sustaining the withering zone. How do I get that energy though? Teamwork is dream work. Take flight. Embrace the ice. Oh. Is it working? Oh, yeah, it is. Hey, that can freaking hit me. Great work. Now that all the branches have been cleared, we'll need to take care of the tumor. Nice, I missed. Here we go. Destroy the tumor of the withering. We did it! Everything's returning to normal now! Yes. Thanks to you two, we were able to quickly restore this area back to normal. Um, Tainari? You make it sound like we did well, but why does Paimon have the feeling you're worried about something? It's that obvious, huh? All right, it's like this. Recently, the rate at which withering zones appear has been increasing. Even though we were able to quickly clear that withering zone, it won't be long before another one appears. If that simply meant more work for me, then that wouldn't be an issue. But it's far more severe than that. The withering is leaving lasting effects on the rainforest itself. For instance, even though we cleared out the withering zone, many of the plants that were affected will not recover. This presents a crisis for the ecosystem itself. Many plants in the rainforest are already in decline, directly impacting the wildlife that depends on those plants. And most disturbingly, as the appearances of withering zones have started to increase, Kale's case of Elazar has also become more serious. Huh? But why is that? I'm still not sure of the exact reason. However, I've received word from acquaintances at the Academia that similar cases are being reported for patients with other conditions. Is there no way to permanently get rid of the wither? No, none that we know of. The withering has been recorded in Sumeru for millennia. It's said that it originates from the depths of the world. Oh, oh by the way, have you heard of Ermansoul before? 
Nope, I haven't. Ermin Soul is a tree located deep beneath the surface. Oh wait. Although it isn't like any tree we know in a biological sense, you can basically think of it as a large tree that grows downwards rather than upwards. Maybe it's the one that we saw. I'm sure you've heard of ley lines, right? They're like the roots of Ermin Soul, spreading and extending from a massive cavern deep underground all the way up to the surface. Spreading and extending. A massive cavern. Sounds a lot like what I saw when I was lost consciousness in the cave. Ley lines continually absorb the memories of this world, which are then funneled into Ermin Soul, allowing it to collect knowledge and wisdom from ancient times to present day. The Dendro Archon is known as the God of Wisdom because her consciousness is directly connected to it. It is also said that the Dendro Archon's power is a manifestation of Ermin Soul. And as for the withering, its emergence is related to a disease that's affecting it. Huh. You mean... Armin Soul is sick? That's right. My ancestors learned of this from Greater Lord Ruka Devada's familiars a long time ago. But even those mysterious creatures did not know of a cure for Ermin Soul. <sighs> I'm afraid we rangers will be battling the withering zones here for a long time. Until a cure is found. All right, that's enough on this topic for the time being. Now that we've taken care of things here, it's time for us to head back to Kandarvaville. <laughs> Some rose. song is that from oh Aladdin why did that came to my mind of nowhere <laughs> back how did it go the withering zone you reported has been taken care of no need to worry huh wait is that oh no Hypatia Hypatia huh what's wrong Tainari this dusk bird is Hypatia's designated courier for urgent news you do remember her, don't you? She's the scholar you and Paimon were following when you first arrived in Sumeru. Oh, her? How could we forget? Uh, so did something happen? Let me see what's written in the letter first. Hmm. Uh... So what's it say? And what's with that weird expression on your face? Uh, just let Paimon read it. Huh? Uh... All Paimon sees are three squiggly lines. <sighs> Yes, uh, allow me to explain. After we brought you from Hapasia's cave to Gandarvaville, Hapasia resumed her meditation. She must have just finished. It's been nearly three days since she's had anything to eat, and it appears she's forgotten to prepare some rations. This letter is her asking us for help. We need to go. What? You mean she's been sitting there for three days? Hey, wait, how did you know all that from just a few lines on the paper? Well... Obviously, because this has happened before. Last time, she drew five lines, and by the time we found her... Well, I'd prefer not to remember that. Needless to say, Hapasia's been through worse, but we should still get to her as quickly as possible. I've got some emergency rations set aside for times like these. Paimon, Traveler, could you two bring these to her? Wait, you want us to bring her the rations? Uh, 
But will the Traveler be okay if her cave is still filled with that funny incense? Let's find out. Here, Traveler. Take a smell and see. So? How do you feel? No unusual feelings this time. Huh? Really? You're not feeling even a little drowsy? Nope. But wait, how'd you know that he'd be okay this time, Tainari? Back when we were clearing the withering zone, I observed that he could adeptly manipulate the dendro element. I knew then that he would be fine. And if I may ask, when I was telling you two about Ermin Soul's ley lines, was what I described similar at all to what you saw when you were unconscious? What I saw weren't hallucinations, were they? That's correct. Those weren't hallucinations at all. Though I don't intend to apologize for deceiving you. Because what you saw is of significant importance. Not just for the nation of Sumeru, but the entire world of Tavat. My forefathers were shown much favor by Greater Lord Ruka Devada. We took an oath to protect this nation together with her. Now that that duty has fallen to me, it was a part of my responsibilities to ascertain whether you could be entrusted with the fate of Sumeru. Now, after seeing you in action with my own eyes, you have earned my confidence, and I no longer feel the need to hide any secrets from you. I knew it. So what exactly was it that I saw? When you passed out, your consciousness had connected directly with Ermansoul. What you witnessed were actually real memories contained within Ermansoul itself. I could try to tell you more, but it would be better if you went to ask Hapasia instead. Her focus on meditation and use of spirit Borneal are aimed at establishing a connection with Ermansoul, just as you did. She completely ignored us the last time we tried talking to her. That was because when you ran into her, she was in a special phase of her training. During that time, she must avoid communicating with others. Please, wait here for a moment. Oh my god, this was dog in the bag. Oh, he scared the poor bird. Here, take these. It's a meal I packed for Hapasia, as well as some other ingredients. I'm sure it'll come in handy. Also, here's a letter that I would like you to give to her. Just show it to her, and she'll answer any questions you may have. All right, thank you. <laughs> no, I should be the one thanking you. You've both been a great help these last few days. Oh my god. Hapatia should still be in the cave. Let's go inside and see how she's doing. How is that sound? It's Hypatia, is she okay? Huh? Uh-oh. There you are! Hypatia, 
Are you all right? Uh, uh, so hungry. <coughs> she looks famished. There's no way we can get her to eat in her current condition. Uh, let's try finding some water first. Huh? Wait. Why does it look super foggy outside all of a sudden? Uh, anyway, let's go look around. Huh? How'd things out here end up looking like this? Whoa, the whole place is different. Wh what happened? And where are we? There must be a logical explanation for all this, right? Really? Oh, maybe you're right. Let's go investigate the area. Ah, what the hell? I'm guessing it had to do something with the little green bean that we saw before it all went black. Wow, this place is huge! I knew there's something off about that cave. Uh, let's think of a way to get over there and have a closer look. Who knows? Maybe we'll find a lead of some kind. Bouncing mushrooms in the mains. You will find you will sometimes find bouncing mushrooms of this sort in Sumeru's domains. The reason for which these mushrooms are not one of the are not one of the three Lakshana creatures are unknown, but must be quite fascinating indeed. <laughs> ah. What the hell? Door of uh, resurrection activated. Uh huh. Huh? What happened just now? Why'd everything around us suddenly change? That kind of looked like. Silent seeker of knowledge. Primeval rosin in the mains. You will sometimes find primeval rosin and silk path that correspond to them, to them within the mains in Sumeru. Collect three primeval rosins within these domains to unlock the corresponding path. There's one. Oh, what the hell is going on? No, my chest! Get me back! Where the hell am I going now? Oh, 
Oh, there's the second one. Uh, honestly. My apologies. Changed again, didn't it? What in Tavet is going on here? This place is getting weirder by the minute. <gasps> hey, what's the matter? You don't look so good. This place looks gorgeous. Can I break yeah. any of these? Huh. What is this for? Wait, what the hell? It was a picture? Huh. That's messed up. Oh, shit. <laughs> what is he doing well, over here? Well, well. Looks like we meet again, traveler. <laughs> ah, this, Harold. What are you planning to do in this strange place? Strange place. Plotting. <laughs> you needn't worry about such things. They don't concern you. I'm going in. Let's light it up. Think you can get away? Sakura swirl. Take flight. <laughs> Weak and powerless you really are. 
My journey will not end here. Your sister. <laughs> oh, pitiful traveler. Are you really so ignorant? Or are you just living in complete denial? Her highness has long since forsaken you. Your meager existence in her eyes is that of an annoying bug, only to be stepped upon. The bonds of love and family which drive you to find your sibling are utterly gone. Your journey is meaningless. But don't you fret now. Today will be your last. Now die! Uh, huh? Why well, was all that just now? Strange. It, it feels like I was just dreaming for a moment there, but I can't remember what, he, what I saw. Well, Paimon is here now. What do we do? We haven't seen Hapatia anywhere out here. Wait, she doesn't remember anything? Uh -huh. Well, the good news is that she's still conscious. Hey, why'd you drop her food on the floor like that? Sorry, uh, kind of still not for a second there. Uh, are you okay? That's really not like you. Anyways, we can talk about this later. We better make sure she's alright first. Wait a sec. Look at all this fruit lying around her. We can put that to good use. Uh, who is there? Tainari, is that you? Uh. Huh? It's okay. You can relax, Hapatia. Tainari sent us here to bring you some food and water. Here, we have a letter that he asked us to give you. I see. So, you're friends of Tainari. I apologize for all the trouble I've caused you. I'm grateful that you came so quickly to save me. You even brought all this fruit. Yeah, sure, totally. Uh, well, actually, we didn't bring the fruit. It was already here when we arrived. We were kind of wondering about that, actually. When we found you here, there was all this fruit lying around and even some juice dripping from your lips. Uh, how did you end up like this anyway? Oh, really? Hmm, I seem to understand now. All the fruit was likely from my, uh, neighbor. Must have come by and saw me like this. Your neighbor? You mean there's someone else living nearby? Kinda like a cabbage? Oh? So you're able to see them too? Yeah. Second traveler, you say that before we arrived, you saw some mysterious creature and suddenly had a strange dream? Isn't that a little too crazy to believe? No, I actually do believe what the traveler is saying. I myself had a similar experience once before and ended up scaring my timid little neighbor here. You needn't worry, they mean you no harm. They only dragged you into the dream because they hoped to buy themselves a little time in order to scurry away. So. Hypatia, just what kind of creature is your neighbor exactly? I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest. But I do know that they have some sort of deeper connection with the Dendro Archon. I know this because the first time I saw them was also the exact day my consciousness was able to form a connection with Ermin's soul. Even after I opened my eyes and stopped meditating, 
My heart was still pounding, and my mind was racing with all the knowledge that I had touched. And at that very moment, I suddenly noticed a small figure at the opening of the cave. In my curiosity, I began to walk over to the creature. They must have already been used to me living in the cave, because they didn't seem to mind me approaching them. They just kept doing whatever they were up to. It wasn't until I crouched down next to them that they suddenly realized that I could see them. Oh! And then? And then I had a dream. By the time I came to, they were nowhere to be seen. I was convinced they'd never show up again. But sure enough, I saw them nearby a few days later. And they weren't alone. I feel like they aren't as afraid of me as the first time I approached them. But I never would have expected them to save me. What fascinating creatures. Yes, no doubt about that. By the way, Tainari mentioned in his letter that you had questions for me regarding Ermansoul. Yeah, that's true. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Sounds like just drinking juice still isn't quite enough for my stomach. Well, if somebody hadn't dropped the oh, come on. Here. <sighs> anyway, looks like we'll need to prepare something ourselves. Besides, Paimon's getting hungry too. Let's eat first and talk about Ermansoul later. Paimon, you're always hungry. Alright, we're up, Traveler. Today's menu will feature sweet madame and a radish veggie soup. You'll love them, Hapasia. They're our specialties after all. Mmm, sounds good. I've never tried any dishes from other nations before. I certainly look forward to it. It's been so long since I've had a decent meal, too. To be honest, the last time had to be when Tainari came to visit. <laughs> Arr, I was there. Where's the campfire, though? There it is. Um, surprised I actually have a lot of engravings for food. How about I make her this? Uh, actually, this seems delicious. Yeah. Oh wait, I have Coley. I got her. When? Uh. Oh my God, she actually cannot cook. No way. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, well, it seems like I don't have any character that has a bonus, right? Cook, cook manually. Sure. Oh. Oh, it's with X. Perfect. Oh. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Uh, cooking really isn't my forte. Uh, here you go. Where's the food at? Oh, wait, maybe I have to, to do this specific food? Huh. Okay, I'm freaking burning. And which one would it be? Because I don't see any... Maybe I haven't learned the recipe. I don't know. Over here. No. Uh. How's this? Thank you. 
Oh my, I have so many freaking artifacts. Oh, maybe it's this option. Yeah, there you go. All done. Let's use the empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing. And the box is a nice touch too. Let's go serve this up and start eating with Hapasia. Are you already finished cooking? Even though everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermin's soul immediately after smelling spirit borneal for the first time. It took me nearly three years before I could do so. And everyone at the Academia even lauded me as a genius. <laughs> you should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermin's soul as you have. So why does this incense allow people to connect to Ermin's soul? The ingredients used to make spirit borneo primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. These special ingredients are conducive to heightening our senses to the Dendro Archon's power. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Ermensoul, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the Earth. I think I understand. Naturally. Anyone who can establish a connection with Ermensoul in their first ever attempt must be a person of great understanding. Hmm. Oh yeah, Makes truly. Sense. But Paimon's got a question. Why was he sensitive to the smell of those plants for such a long time? That was primarily due to his body's unique constitution. Stimulated by the incense, he could perceive the Dendro Archon's power and experience the sensory overload, hence the adverse reactions. Taking in any scent similar to the ingredients of Spirit Borneo would cause adverse effects. Not to worry, though. It appears you've already fully recovered. Technically, your body should still be sensitive to the powers of the Dendro Archon, but unless you're using intentional meditation techniques, the scent of spirit borneo should no longer trigger such reactions. Whew. Well, that's a relief. I must admit, I am quite envious of your abilities. Even if it meant suffering from pounding headaches for the rest of my life, I'd consider it worthwhile so long as I could connect with Ermansoul at will. Oh, you're really serious about this whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> I am a researcher, after all. As a member of the Ritawa Starshan at the Academia, my main area of research is the stars and their connection to the fate of living beings. But there is still so much we don't know, especially regarding the mysteries that lie in the starry skies. Which is why I must turn to the all-knowing Ermansoul for answers. If only my perception wasn't so limited. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that my every attempt to attune with Ermansoul will be successful, or that doing so will leave my consciousness intact. I am currently in the stage of training known as Satyavada Life. Many researchers in Sumeru have lost their minds while seeking to attune with Ermansoul during this stage. Sages have said that Ermansoul contains divine knowledge, and touching such knowledge without the proper preparations and abilities will only lead to one's mind caving in on itself. That's why we meditate alone. We need to ensure that our minds will be calm while minimizing the possibility of involving anyone else. Whoa, so knowledge from Ermansoul can be super dangerous. Don't you ever feel afraid of the risk, Capasia? Of course I do. Especially during nights that are pitch black with no moonlight and dead silent without even the sound of insects. However, I've been feeling better as of late. I don't get as scared anymore knowing that I have a little neighbor living nearby. I believe that being able to see them is a sort of blessing from the Dendro Archon. 
<laughs> but what's strangest of all is that they're clearly an envoy of the God of Wisdom herself. And they have the curious power to make people dream. What's so strange about that? It doesn't sound so out of place for a divine being, does it? Well, it's strange because nearly nobody in Sumeru can ever dream. What? Ah, oh, is that true? Yes, well, to an extent. Only children can dream in Sumeru. Adults, however, never do. How is that even possible? The sages say that wisdom implies rationality, but that which occurs in dreams is often neither rational nor logical. Reminds me of the dream I saw from the Aranera. Yes, if one struggles with anxieties, those emotions could influence their dreams. The fact that the people of Sumeru do not have dreams is seen as a blessing by the sages. They believe that Greater Lord Ruka Devata, the God of Wisdom, is keeping us away from the foolish delusions you encounter in your sleep. I was born into a family of scholars in Sumeru City. Ever since I was a child, my parents would always tell me that I'll know I've grown up once I stop dreaming. I studied hard, enrolled as a student in the academia, and went on to become a researcher. <sighs> sure enough, I never dreamed again. Rape. But then, on the day I scared the little Aranara, I suddenly saw a dream again. It was incredible. Though I don't exactly remember what I saw, I clearly recall the feeling. I suddenly felt like I was a child again. Back then, I was foolish and ignorant as any youth would be. But I was free of fear. Maybe dreaming isn't as bad as we've made it out to be. <clears throat> uh, just be sure not to speak of this if you travel to Sumeru City. They'll look at you as if you've lost your mind. So, do you have any thoughts about the things he saw when he connected with Ermansul? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any answers as of now. All I can say is that what you saw is a memory contained within Ermansul itself. Hmm. World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh, if only I could ascend past Satyavada life and begin Paripurna life. I might have some more answers for you. Uh, if you two are ever in the area again, please be sure to come and see me. Alright, thank you. Wish you luck in your endeavors. There's no need to be thanking me. You two are my saviors. Besides, I'm already looking forward to tasting some more of your cooking. <laughs> now that we know Hapasia is alright and had the chance to ask her some questions, Paimon thinks it's about time to head back to Gondarvaville. I think I have a portal where do I not? Actually, no. I gotta go pee first, though. I'll just... Look at that. <laughs> that looks really good. Guess we can rest a bit.
I still have a lot to do at the guild. How about you take a rest while I go back? Guess we can rest a bit. I'm back. Welcome back. about it, Tainari. Refusing to join is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones, but isn't it evident that such work is not a lasting solution to the problem? As Sage Kajay clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. How could you possibly refuse? Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Let's at least listen to Tainari's reason for declining. We're here to invite him to the Academia, not to cause a scene. Sage Kaje, I am truly honored that you came here in person, but I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. Hmm. I am merely a forest watcher. How could the great minds of the Haravitat have any need of someone like me? <laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. He is a renowned sage of the Immorta, after all. So now I've come here in his stead. I see. Hmm. Huh. Well, I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Tainari, your master is an integral part of this effort. And now he requires your assistance. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kaje? You'll know, once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. And uh, how long will I be required to stay? Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Do you mean to tell me that despite coming all the way here to Gandarvaville, you still can't answer the questions I laid out in the letter to my master. If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Tainari, but you... Uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. Why is that dude looking so mad always? Uh, Tainari, what was that all about? It's nothing. Some people from the Academia wanted me to go to Sumeru City to assist them with a the project, but I had to refuse on account of all my responsibilities here. But all that can wait. How did things go with Hapasia? It was quite the eventful trip, but the main thing is that she's safe and safe. 
around. She answered a bunch of questions for us, too. Very good. Now that the Traveler has made a full recovery, there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. I assume you will be heading to Sumeru City, correct? That's right! We want to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Um, do you have any idea on how we can find her? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any advice for you there. Well, do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short, and uh, most of my acquaintances are researchers. Oh, how about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. He's from the Amorta Darshan and is adept at gathering information. Asking him might prove worthwhile. Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. I'm not sure if it will ever come in handy for you, but maybe you can give it a try. Oh? What is it? It's called an Akasha Terminal. It's a tool produced by the Academia that utilizes the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Some say that this item is the very basis of Sumeru's reputation as the City of Wisdom. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise, so I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Great! Next stop, Sumeru City! Yeah. Uh, oh, but wait, before that... Yeah, we need to say goodbye to Kali. That's right! Tainari, we have something important to say to Kali before we leave. Is she doing better now? Yes, she's doing much better. After being confined to her bed all this time, I thought a little walk would do her some good. Last I saw her, she was taking the path towards the North Crossing. She knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go! Farewell, and good luck to you both. Oh, there she is, already waiting for us. Doggy! You do. I, uh. Well, uh. <sighs> Never mind. I guess I should just wish you two a safe and successful journey. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Please take care of yourself, Kali. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. I want to be a forest ranger after all. It's up to me and the others to protect the rainforest here. And, uh... Well, uh... I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. I just wanted you two to treat me as a normal friend. Not some girl that needs your sympathy. It's okay. We understand. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. There's no need to apologize, Kale. We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. Yeah. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you. Paimon, so true, you're real. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. What is that? Oh, what is it? It's my recipe for pita pockets. I told <laughs> you that I'd give you a copy, remember? Yeah. My handwriting is a little uh messy, so please don't laugh. Oh, it truly cannot be worse than Paimon's. Yay! Thanks, Kale. Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like. I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandarvaville. <laughs> of course we will. Well then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. Please visit Gandarvaville again. The rangers will always be ready to assist you here. The place does seem kind of far away. I 
There's a waypoint over here. I should definitely go get it first. Oh, there's no way. Burning. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. And uh, that's true. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. Hmm? But no need to worry. That won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved greater lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy. A treasure trove of collected knowledge. Yeah, we heard of it before. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha Terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Ormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leaf. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't see the leaf. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Mighty, mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. What is this, a VR headset? <gasps> Concentrate on what we want to know, and BAM! You get it! Oh, that'll come in real handy! Exactly! That is the power of the Akasha! And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City! May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide!
Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm. Seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Uh. Huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um. Hmm. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. Huh, the same happened to me. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. I'll try asking the Akasha something else. Think, uh, lesser Lord Kusanali. Some knowledge began to tickle in my mind for a moment, but there wasn't really anything that I didn't already know. Nope, no luck. Hmm. You too. Well, glad it's not just Paimon. How about Greater Lord Rukadevata? Many f bring dots of life appear in my mind, but I probably need to calm my mind and focus more to understand what they mean. Feelings of affection, intimacy, nostalgia, sadness, and anxiety also come to my mind. These seem to be what people of Sumeru feel about their reported Archon. Okay. Why doesn't the Akasha answer my question? A vague thought suddenly comes to my mind. The Akasha doesn't uncon unconditionally respond to every query. Also, even if the same query is requested by multiple people, the Akasha still imparts knowledge based on each person's identity, age, experiences, and other demographics. Because we're outlanders, and we've only just arrived in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. Maybe. <sighs> well, seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru, and even has a position in the Academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Let's see. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hope. Oh. Hello, are you Rohawi? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? What? Tainari? I... Uh, please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Oh, we're not here to discuss academics. Here! This is a letter from Tainari! Oh, let me see... Ah! Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. So, you two just have some questions for me? Yep. Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. So, what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. 
Let me guess. No information. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, I'm almost sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorostana or made a public appearance. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. Aw, but then what can we do? <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. How come? In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. So by area of expertise... Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the academia. were pretty low but this is so low it's like digging holes in the dirt <laughs> dang so what do we do now even if we want to talk to someone we don't know anybody here no there's still one other person we know huh like who at astra avisovsk oh you're right Catherine. the adventurers guild has its own intel network let's hurry at Astra something. Let's Watch see. Add Astra Avisask. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Hello. We need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurers Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. I apologize. But I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Corps of Thirty? What a weird name. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Asfond, an advisor with the Corps of 30, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of 30's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. Thanks a bunch, Catherine. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. All right, off to the Citadel of Rizal we go! 
Oh, it's with square. Paimon, it's good to see you. I've got an urgent commission I'd like to give you to. The commission is in Monster Mansion, who is currently in our village, according to him. His associates and the Sumter Beast they lead out to an academic research have been missing in the desert for a while now. He's hoping that a highly experienced adventurer can take this commission and confirm the status of this associate and this and the Stumter Beast. You're both highly experienced adventurers, so a commission like this should be a kinch for you, I hope. Missing in the desert. That certainly is worrying. Let's go take a look, Carlos. Uh, the commissioner is named Boniface, and he's still in Aro Village now. He can fill you in on the specifics. Safe travels, you two. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Welcome to the Adventurers Guild. Oh my god, the dispatch. Oh, I can clean all. Whoa, that's sick. Ah. Oh, and it puts all of them again. Oh, this is new. Uh, none of this seems very interesting, though. Oh, I can have up to five now, though. Huh. Anyone else in Liyue? No. In Asuma, maybe? Yeah, I have her. I can get... What about here though? No, I don't have anyone. Guess I'll just put Amber. Add Astra Abyssoth. Oh yeah, the rewards for being Max adventure rank increased to sixty. World level increased. Oh, so 60 is the max. There's nothing above 60. I think I stopped playing at level 50 or something like that. There's a lot of stuff that I'm missing. Venti. Oh yeah, I have Raiden. Huh, I might use her. I don't know any of these guys though. There she is, Kali. Wait, what? Who the hell is there? Who is she? <laughs> Linette? Uh, where are her skills? Performs up to four rapid strikes. Flicks her mantle, mantle and executes an enigma trust. It's uh, a five star. Was it free or something? Maybe it was. Deya. A member of the Hermits, a mercenary organization that. Oh! It might be her, the ones that I made. Oh, a claimer user. Nice. How do you check the party thingy? 
I think it was in there. Was it like this? Whoa, they changed the thing. That's nice. Did I switch her? Hmm. I mean, I suppose I could. What is the situation? I will. Why not? Okay. Oh, there's a wait point somewhere over there. Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Asfand. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait, seriously? <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Oh? Why's that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late greater lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? Aww. After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> No problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. <sighs> Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, If the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. The 
But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, who is this? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Well, can you tell us the legend? Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in the hopes that she would bless him with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass. Every ray of sparkling sun and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. What an amazing story. Yeah, thanks for the story. Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh... Uh-oh. Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Hey, wait! Uh, what the heck just happened? Well, I think he has something to do with those people over there. Yeah, most likely. Uh, this stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now! <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them! Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad! Hey! Have you two seen a brown haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? She went that way. Quick, after her. <laughs> that should keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry and find Dunyar's eye. <laughs> Crazy Paimon, let's go. Oh. Uh. She went this way, didn't she? There she is. There you are, Dunyarzad! We thought you might have been long gone by now. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! No, wait, I... Uh, my body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. Okay, how about we find some place to hide? Okay, sounds good. 
There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. We made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, Dia. Oh my God, it's her. My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Hey! Junior Zod already said she doesn't want to go back! Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? How much? Wait, what? <laughs> How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer so you never listen to my parents ever again? Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt you. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. I still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father. And I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up, and I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So. I'll let you hire me, my lady. 
This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Dunzahar, are you alright? I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Sure! After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! Well, if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. Ha! <laughs> don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it, huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? <laughs> we don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Don't worry about it, we'll pay for our own food. Wait, we're paying for ourselves now? Aww, Paimon kinda wanted to try something fancy, but we aren't exactly loaded. Guess Paimon will settle for something ordinary. What do you mean? We have a lot of more, I think. How about our charcoal baked Ajelena cakes? They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look! Other customers over there are eating some now. Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. Dang. Paimon will pass. Picky Paimon, now that's a first. Hey, come on! Paimon has personal preferences too, you know. Oh, yeah? Dunyarzad, we asked a lot of people when we first arrived. And almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends. And my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually... I know everything about you. Really? Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder. That you hate taking medicine every morning. And that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Dinner is odd. Is there anything you want? Want? Not really. I, I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But... Aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. But... Can you make my illness go away? Oh... I'm sorry. But... I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then... Can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, 
Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel. Deserts and all of Tevat. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. So you believe the voice you heard was... Yes, for sure. Okay. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus Festival for her. What's the Subzerus Festival? It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadabata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. But because of the Academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukudabata. But when it comes to the Subzerus Festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukudabata's death. So they're reluctant to celebrate it. Aww, but that's awful. It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the sub Festival to this day. But I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hold on, my lady. Does this friend happen to be Nilu? The one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Hmm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much more prepared. So I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure, that's quite the trip though. I'll carry you. No, that would be too much, even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. Can we also come along? But of course. Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. Sorry I'm late, Nilu. Oh, Dunyarzad. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Uh-oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. <laughs> uh, not completely. Oh. 
And who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? Yep, that's right. That's wonderful. You two absolutely mustn't miss the Sabzeris Festival. By the way, Dunyarzad, we've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular, thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. Wow! This place is amazing! Not bad. <laughs> Last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Why, did any, why didn't anyone come to handle it? Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. The Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Thank the Dendra Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Milu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzeros. The most important performance at the Subzeros Festival. Dunyarzad, have you told him the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay, then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Subzeros Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Rukadevata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. One started playing music, and the greater lord started singing. So the goddess of flowers began to dance. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful Padisaras began to bloom wherever she stepped. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Sounds like they had a great time. Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always think of the Archon War. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the Goddess of Flowers looked. Though we're just tiny people compared to the Divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. <laughs> they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisara's memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Thinking about the Goddess of Flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that... Uh, I 
be thrilled if I had just two real body Saras on the stage. <sighs> so, Traveler and Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzerus Festival? Will you two be coming? All of Lesser Lord Kusanali's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. Ooh, Paimon thinks that's a great idea! I think so too. You're sure it's not because you want to watch Nilo dance? Of course Paimon wants to watch. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive, you know. <laughs> so how about we all attend the sub festival together? Sounds like a plan. Junior Zod, let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler and Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Sabzerus Festival. In that case, we'll take a look around! Toy Sellers? I'm gonna take those fruits. Ah, dancing at the Subzeru's festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. If the Goddess of Flowers ever knew Lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her, too. The Subzerus Festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of mora to make it all happen. I'm sure she did. Things are really shaping up and there's a buzz around the festival this year. We're expecting people from all over to come by this year and buy things during the festivities. Don't be fooled into thinking that Sumeru City has the best of everything. Some festival snacks are only offered here in the Grand Bazaar. And when it comes to musicians, dancers or singers, the Grand Bazaar's got the best of the best. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? Whoa! What's with your yellow hair? And why do your clothes look so funny? Are you an outlander? Wow. Did you know that the Sabzerus Festival is about to happen? There'll be loads of fun things to do at the festival. The best part is when Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, passes out candy to everyone. Huh. Revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the Academia doesn't particularly approve of. Oh, and the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard at least. Uh-huh, totally. It's okay. You can use those products. Nilu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? Wow, did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. 
Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off this crown. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Ah, oh. oh, Dunya Zod. You look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Oh, stop lying. Hey, is that who Paimon thinks it is? Yeah. It looks like Catherine. Shaken. Whoa, break time Catherine sure sounds a lot less formal than usual. Paimon was still waiting for her to say Ad Astra Abyssos. <laughs> They're gonna let me too. Sure. <laughs> Standing behind the counter at the Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. But take you two, for example. You travel across to Vat to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Well, we enjoy traveling across to Vat and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about his sister. Yes, you should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Haven't we heard someone say something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? Yeah, are you also a fan of the Sevetsure Festival, perhaps? No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Oh, it looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. All right, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro after all. <laughs> see you around. There's something really different about Catherine today. Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Oh, hey, Thea. What's going on? I've got something to tell ya. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali, and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Are you serious? We'd love that! It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. Okay, what about Don Sahar, though? Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. Sounds like a plan! Let's head over to the Citadel of Regzar and wait for Dia! Sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? 
It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. Yeah, right. Professional, my ass. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Yep, that's a blush if I ever seen one. Ugh, listen, you two. Yeah, yeah. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit chat and head into the citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the lesser lord. Sure, let's go inside. Oh, hey, Chief. Ha, <laughs> Dia! What are you doing here? And well, well. Didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Yep. Mm -hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Osvan for more info. No kidding. Hmm. Huh. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Rukshaw's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumeru City to begin bolstering its defenses. So people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Yeah. Just recently, the Academia lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you can head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Huh? Students of the Academia? Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me. If you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Aramites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like Retake Sumeru for King Deshret. Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. You bet they are. <sighs> King Deshret's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandon their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next. Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzeru's festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Yeah, then we will. Good. 
Then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. Nice. Now, who the hell is trying to join the world? <laughs> I saw a notification. Is it here? No. Yeah, I don't see the request. Test run? Oh yeah, the new 5 star. Gatito! Actually, sure, I'll try her. Let's see how good she is. Oh my god, two swords! No way! That's sick. I am the cutting edge of fashion. Let's go, tomato. Tomato, tomato. Oh, I got hit. Nice. What does this little thing do, though? Ah. Delicate as silk. I'm going in. Nice and spicy. Uh, exit. She doesn't look bad, but she's definitely not that good. Hmm. Well. Whoa, that thing is far away. Oh yeah, that is definitely okay. As gonna be a lot of walking. What was this? Oh, for crafting. So you can even craft relics now. Hmm. <laughs> Wouldn't gliding be faster? Yes, it would. Let's glide. Wouldn't glider be faster? Sure, I'll fight you guys. Go. <laughs> Everybody stand back. Time for takeoff. Brace yourselves.
going down. I'm going in. Nice. Torn to oblivion. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, keep going forward. I think so. Sometimes you just need to go. There's one on top. Twenty thousand. Oh, it gives you prior. Ah. Oh, you need 20. No, -oh. no, -oh, that's a lot. Brace yourself. Wakey wakey. Remains of an ancient ruin guard 
he looks deprived of energy. Huh. Alright. for fishing I fear it might be on top. Maybe I can find an elevator or some kind of thing that uh, put me on top. Made it. Come and have a good look yourself. Traditional spices of the highest quality, made with pride and experience. <laughs> You've got a deal. I can't thank you enough for always looking after my business. Believe me, I'm not making this up. Several Eremite mercenary groups are nearly in open conflict. But does the core of 30 care? <sighs> and that's not all. Did you know that... Wow! Talk about hurly burly! This place is busy! Oh, guess that's only to be expected for the largest port in Sumeru. Maybe it's because of what Dia told us earlier, but Baiman can't seem to shake the feeling that there's also danger lurking in these crowds. Ooh. Let's get our bearings so we can start looking for leads. We know that whatever the Academia lost is related to the gods. But other than that, we don't have much else to go on. Hmm... Asma told us to try posing as academia students while asking around. Paimon checked the Akasha on the way here, and the academia doesn't seem to have any research facilities in poor Ormos. Paimon doesn't get it. Won't we look even more suspicious going around saying we're academia students and asking about the stolen item? Yeah, right. We should figure that out before doing anything else. Well, given all the people that come through here every day, if there's any information to be found, Paimon bets we could find it in the market. Let's ask around and see what we come up with. Yep. Let's go. Thank you. 
Taylor. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, how can I help you too? Uh, hi there. We would like to ask you a question. Um, do students from the academia ever come to Port Ormos? <laughs> of course. Especially around this time of year. Students from Sumeru City that are about to graduate often come to Port Ormos to cut loose a little. Many people often talk about how hard it is to get accepted into the academia, let alone graduate. But those who finish their studies and go on to become full-time researchers at the academia have it even harder. Sure, we may not be Sumero City, but Port Ormos offers beautiful scenery and a stress-free environment. Some even say it's good luck to come to Port Ormos, so students and researchers come flocking here when things get to be too much at the academia. Ah, you see over there? Those are students from the academia. Well, they look pretty serious. They've been looking worried and miserable ever since they got here a few days ago. If you ask me, the life of a merchant is better. So long as the Akasha teaches us what we need, then life is good. Hmm. Those students seem to be discussing something. Let's see if we can listen in. Sure. <laughs> oh my god, where is he going to be hiding? It's no good. I've tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary-looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. There's been a lot of fighting between the different Aramite factions in Port Ormos. If we choose to move on our own, then it would be wise to steer clear of them. Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about King Deshred and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Regzar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? They're called Ein El Akhmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Wait, come again? Don't you see? Many of the Aramites in Port Ormos deal with trading this kind of thing. They're usually pretty wary of outsiders, but not so with students of the academia. It's because the kind of goods that students are looking for aren't the kind of goods that Aramites are after. As long as they know you're a student, then deals can be made. I've heard that Ein al Hakmar likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, if you're willing to part with half a million Mora, they'll give you info on anything. Wait, wait, did you say half a million? If information alone costs that much, then how could we ever afford to buy what we're looking for? <sighs> I guess we might as well give up on trying to graduate this way. I wouldn't worry too much. Our field of research is very niche. Who else could possibly be after that kind of shady knowledge? I bet it's practically worthless to anyone aside from us. Ah, <clears throat> uh, yeah, true. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Then the only thing left for us now is to find a way in. Why don't we all just pool our money together and pay for the information? Whoa, did you hear that? A niche field of research and shady knowledge? It all sounds pretty suspicious to Paimon. Is knowledge something people just buy and sell like that? Uh, it's very suspicious indeed. So, what's your plan? Well, let's go to the far tavern. Wait, didn't you hear what they just said? Buying information is going to cost us half a million mora. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> Reliable information is worth the price. thought you'd agree to parting with that kind of mora. But if you know what you're doing, then we should give it a shot. Do I even have that amount? Uh... Yeah. I actually do. Hmm. It's not that much then. Eh? 
This is the place we heard those students talking about. Let's find. Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. So, they think that they can go toe to toe with the boss? Huh. Once we reclaim the power of King Deshret, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time, so we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, He'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh. All these guys talk about is King Deshret. So they're probably the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata. That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when King Deshret exacts vengeance on Sumeru. And all of them shall be punished. Traitor Lord Ruka Devata, a traitor? Was wondering what they meant too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. Huh? Who are you? What do you want? Uh. I'm a student from the academia. A student? What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? I'm looking for info about certain, uh, something. Ah, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Yeah, I sure can. Here, this is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? Alright. I just have one more question. Oh, that's right! We heard you mention King Deshret just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of King Deshret. Years ago, King Deshret founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present day Sumeru. King Deshret was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title. God of Wisdom. So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed King Deshret's civilization. And our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. <clears throat> Just thinking about it sickens me. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. King Deshret isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mark my words, our god shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of King Deshret. <laughs> can you tell can you tell us more about the Oracle? I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Damn it. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Oh no. Huh? Who is this? <sighs> You again? T deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. 
I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more of your worth. Hey! Shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you, don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tevat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Eremite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 more to them. Hey, I'm getting my money back. Let's go. Oh, many thank yous. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh... Ah. Well... <laughs> ah. Someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Whoa, did you see that? He not only got us our Mora back, but sent the Emirates running too! Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions! No oh, questions. Don't you leave. Racing. Yeah. What do you want? Well, thank you for the help back there. No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your Mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. <sighs> All right. Goodbye. Since you tore through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Ahem... Certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? <clears throat> I'm a student from the academia. A student. <laughs> right. Look, 
You should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. I know a thing or two about Tori Play. Huh? Oh, yeah! He's really strong! Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. He doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Maybe not, but he can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... I'll... I... Uh, um... From those guys. From guys like that. Yeah. Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. Hmm. <sighs> All right, I accept. Got a pen and paper? If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? Yeah, uh, sounds about right, buddy. <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. We know it's connected to the academia somehow, and that not only do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? It seems like some kind of knowledge. You know almost everything there is to know, but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. What is that? Huh? My mind can't tell what it is. It looks like some kind of ornament. This is a knowledge capsule. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Anyone, you say? Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. That's amazing! <laughs> it's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha, and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. Seems like it's a knowledge capsule. Oh, so that's your true objective. I want to learn more about it. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. Well, perhaps we can negotiate further. <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. <laughs> Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. Okay, what is it? 
I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. She's guarded against people from the academia because most of her wares don't comply with academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. <sighs> Fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality wares and earn her approval. What? We only just saw a knowledge capsule for the first time! We don't know how to tell which ones are good and which ones are bad. Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Uh, I can use it. Oh, well, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. All right. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference in their quality? Um, they look the same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with elemental sight. The one on the left side. How'd it go? Did you see anything? The one on the left side shines brighter. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. That's because knowledge originates from Ermensor, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. However, hmm. some canned knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive! Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any more left over, just keep it. Ah. Oh, and be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? Hmm. They belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. Nope, I'm willing to take the risk. Okay, then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Bet. Looking at what Al Haytham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow these instructions and try to get in contact with him. Hello. What are you two looking to buy? I want to buy some raw hara fruits. Wait. Are you sure you're remembering that right? Uh, Paimon doesn't think it was that on the paper. Okay, then we want to buy some unripe hara fruits. <laughs> what a unique palette. We have unripe hara fruits, but we usually keep them in the back. 
I'll have someone escort you. All right. Following the paper got us past the first round. Ronak, these two want to buy unripe horror fruits. Show them to the warehouse. Got it. You too. Please follow me. You two have a fascinating fashion sense. We haven't seen a customer wearing a Sumeru rose for quite some time. Uh, hold on. Let me think. Sumeru rose means common merch. Um, no. Look again. We're obviously wearing morning flowers. Ah, my mistake. I do apologize. Whew. That pop quiz sure was scary. Ah, the warehouse is up ahead. Please follow me. Before I retrieve your products, I need to confirm a few things. Uh, please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our para fruits were taken by mice. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Thanks. If better goods come in, you'll be the first to know. You look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? Uh... I prefer something that causes heat stroke. No, that's not it. The paper said that heat stroke is the answer to erudition. Ugh, eating something that causes heat stroke sounds horrifying. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. But as things currently stand, we won't be able to fulfill your order. Nice. Why don't you two think things over? He's cautious of us. Let's take a closer look at the paper that Al Haytham gave us. How do you even do that? This is a recipe. Is this one? Wear a morning flower. Uh. Complimenting a customer school corresponds to horror fruit that causes dizziness and ringing in the ears. A customer of a reduction corresponds to horror fruit that causes heat stroke. Before I retrieve your products, I, please forgive me, but we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our para fruits were taken by mice. <laughs> Thank you. Look like you have some skill. Why don't I pick out some fruits that'll make you dizzy? This is this with the side of Titinus, please. Yep, that's the right answer. But eating hara fruit that makes your head and ears ring sounds like a bad life decision. Would you like your Hara fruits to be packaged in the Sumero City or Port Ormo style? Ah, uh, where the hell was that located at? Uh, Port Ormo style. Wow, you two sure oh are God. generous customers. We'll be sure to package your products beautifully. Nice. Okay. Everything has been confirmed. This story is waiting for you up at... Shoot! It's the Matra! Run! What? The Matra? Where? I'll hate them if we're done for if they catch us! We gotta get out of here! 
We don't know this area, so let's follow that employment. He ran that way. Yeah, I saw him. Maybe I... I didn't? Hello? Oh, this way. Look! He's over there! Definitely gotta get the waypoint. now ah dory so you were the one who was calling out to us just now but uh are we definitely gonna be safe here these two good customers wish to buy some horror fruit miss dory and if there's nothing else i'll just excuse myself oh very good thank you You're Dory? I'm unsure thought you'd look a whole lot scarier. Hey, what are you trying to say, Princess Peabrain? I can be scary enough when I need to be, believe you me. If you don't watch what you say, then you can forget about doing any business. But it seems you two have actually done pretty well so far. Not only did you manage to find the informant, your reactions were also pretty sharp. You don't really look like criminals or anything. But I bet my Mora that you've been involved in some shady dealings, haven't you? Oh yes, we, we totally have. Uh, I'm just not sure if that's supposed to be a compliment, but we'll take it. I can't risk doing business with people who start hopping and puffing after just a few paces. No matter how much Mora they might have. Not only will they get caught by the Matra, but they'll also get us into trouble. As decent folks trying to run an honest business. We don't need any of that. Wouldn't you agree? So that's why I prefer to have customers like you. It's your first time here, but don't worry. I won't ask too many questions. Even if you wish to buy enough knowledge capsules to decorate your house with, please knock yourself out. As long as you have lots of round, shiny Mora, then we're all good. Well, can you show us the products? Ah, yes! Of course, of course! Go ahead. Help yourselves. Voila! Wow! She has a trove of canned knowledge! Whew. She'd probably be in serious trouble if the Matra caught her with all this. What kind of products do you seek, my dear customers? Uh, don't worry, I'm not interested in your reasons for buying. I can, however, offer some suggestions. Take this one, for example. An analysis of the sociological ideology and dialectics of the Hillichurls. Only three people in all of Tevat have ever studied it, making it extremely rare. It's on sale now for 350,000 mora. Yeesh. Who would want to be an expert in that topic? Or... How about the architectural styles and construction methods of Tevat in the early Argon War period? With this one, you can become an expert in historic architecture preservation and find an excellent, well-paying job in nearly any nation. Ooh, now this sounds like it could be useful. Yeah, I was surprised though. Two million mora, yeah. and it's yours. No discounts. Of course, you are free to pick whatever your hearts desire. The contents and price of each knowledge capsule are indicated in small text on the body of each one, down at the bottom. All right, let's try the method that I'll hate them mention.
I'll take this one. And this one. As well as this one? Ah, you've really got a good head on your shoulders. And quite the eye for quality. I'll take these, please and thank you. My oh my, you are blessed with a taste for both the exquisite and the extravagant. Customers like you are a rare breed. One in a hundred. No, one in a thousand even. Listen, I have a special offer for you two. If you spend just 100,000 more and more, you can pick any knowledge capsule of your choice up to a value of one million, Mora. Say what now? Hey, did you hear that? Spend another 100k and we get a capsule worth a whole million! Uh, calm down, Paimon. But all the canned knowledge we just bought is easily worth half a million mora. If we spend just a little more, we can get something worth one million mora. Isn't that a fantastic deal? Think about it. We've gone to all this trouble to get this canned knowledge. And so far, everything we've bought belongs to all Haytham. Aren't you even the least bit curious about how this whole canned knowledge thing works? Oh, We're nice. Instant knowledge here. Don't you want to try it yourself? I think you're the one who's curious about it. Come on, come on. We still have around a hundred thousand of our Hatham's moral left. So let's put it to good use by finding something useful for you. Ahem. You've got a deal, Dory. We'd like to spend an extra one hundred thousand mora. Excellent! And then please, select from this fine collection of can knowledge over here. Uh, hold on a second. Time I thought we could choose whatever we wanted. Why can't we choose the ones from over there? Oh, but my dear customer, the knowledge capsules over here are worth one million more each. I'm sure discerning customers like yourselves will be able to find something to your liking. Please, take your time. Uh-oh, Paimon has a bad feeling about this. Let's use Elemental Sight again to check these. Alright, I'll have a look. So, what did you see? They all seem to be equally bright. So they're all worth about the same amount? Well, anyway, the more has already been spent, so let's at least try to find something useful. Let Paimon take a look here. An introduction to traditional Sumeru brewing techniques, the art of growing spices, an overview of ancient runes, how about this one? Sword Fighting Techniques 8! Not sure we'd ever find Volumes 1 through 7, but at least this knowledge should be useful, right? Let's go with this one. Yeah, fine by me. Dory, we'll take this one! Alright, very good. I'm expecting some new goods in the next couple days, so be sure to check back again soon. Whether it's canned knowledge or anything else you need, bring your Mora to Dory and doors will open. Our dealings with Dory went smoothly enough. Let's head to Wakala Funduk and meet up with all Haytham. Hopefully now he'll finally tell us about what the Academia lost. He better, because we just spent a lot of Mora. Ha! Huh. You two made it. And from the looks on your faces, you were successful. Whoa! There's so many people from the Academia here! Why would you pick this place as our meetup spot? Well, Wakela Funduk is under the Academia's control. So naturally, the Academia has people working here. I came to Port Ormos under the pretense of conducting official business. You're a pretty daring guy. Relax. 
No one here is interested in anything we say, and the Macho won't come here. <sighs> okay now, tell me how your encounter with Dory went. Okay, we did what you asked. So, can you tell us about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost now? Before that, I have to ask. Why are you two so intent on tracking it down? You don't have to answer, of course. Well, we just want to meet with the Dendro Archon. Yeah, he just wants to meet the God of Wisdom and ask her about something important. We've been in Sumeru for a while now, but we still haven't found a way. When we heard that the Academia had lost something that might be related to the gods, we came here in case it turned out to be our lucky break. In that case, you're on the right track. Huh. A short while ago, the Academia lost a knowledge capsule in the desert. It's supposedly a divine knowledge capsule. Use it, and you'll gain the wisdom of the gods. Wow. There's really such a thing as that? Hey, if we find it, do you think we can learn how to meet the Dendro Archon? Ooh, or how to find your sister? I highly doubt it has any mystical properties, but it does indeed exist. And it's right here, in Port Ormos. So, where exactly? That's what we need to find out next. I won't deny that. I am investigating because I'm curious as to what the Divine Knowledge Capsule truly is. As you know, the Eremites in Port Ormos also have their eyes on it. It is an extremely precious item. The knowledge contained within may bring great power or wealth to whoever has it in their possession. Several brigades have been vying for ownership of it as of late, but there is still no victor. My personal finances and connections cannot compete with those of the Aramites. After attempting various methods, I finally managed to reach a tentative agreement with several brigades. I agreed to forego ownership of the Divine Knowledge Capsule in exchange for the opportunity to study it. After all, there's no harm in understanding what it is. However, there are those who are less amenable to negotiation, such as those from Ayn al-Akhmar. They adamantly believe that the Divine Knowledge Capsule contains King Deshret's power, and that he will return to this world when they obtain it. They were so you kept hounding them because they refused to cooperate with you? Yes. Ayn al-Akhmar isn't exactly wealthy, but its members are determined to get that capsule by any means necessary. To that end, they've resorted to many methods more foul than fair in order to amass sufficient funds. So, I've been sabotaging their business to force them into negotiating with me. Hmm... The Divine Knowledge Capsule should be up for a secret auction within the next few days. Each brigade will place their own bid, and the prize will be covertly given to the winner. To ensure the capsule's security and to evade the Matra's notice, the winning brigade will not publicly disclose their victory. Unless I know whose hands the Divine Knowledge Capsule ends up in, my agreements with them will fall through. Dory is the most reliable source of information, but that avenue was previously close to me. With you on board now, the situation is different. In other words, you wanted us to befriend Dory so you could find out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. Yes, you can say that. But this arrangement harms none of us. The day after tomorrow, Go back to Dory and try to purchase information on the Divine Knowledge Capsule's whereabouts. If she has no information, wait two days and approach her again. Mm. If I get the opportunity to study the Divine Knowledge Capsule, I will relay my findings to you. Will that suffice as compensation? Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay. Then we'll meet up in two days. Um, I'll hate them. Before you go, we actually bought a knowledge capsule for ourselves, but we're not sure how to use it. <laughs> you two want to try using a knowledge capsule? Sure, 
I can teach you. Yeah. Doing so right under the academia's nose is a bit problematic, though. What do you say we head to the outskirts of town? Yep, that sounds more like it. I'll follow you. Oh, he actually went quite far away. place works. Show me the capsule you purchased. Here. Hmm. Sword fighting techniques eight. Huh. A combat class knowledge capsule. This class is something of a rare find these days, since most have been taken by the Aramites to augment their battle capabilities. Really? Ah, oh, yeah, what a great buy! If you want to determine the efficacy of this capsule, I can evaluate your combat ability. However, effects will likely be minimal if you already possess a high amount of strength. We can conduct a controlled experiment where you fight two battles. One before using this knowledge capsule, and one after. While you fight, we can use an Akasha terminal to monitor your various physical parameters. There may be variances in your physical strength between the two tests, as well as a disparity in your opponent's abilities. But don't worry. I'll run statistical analyses afterward to mitigate any confounding effects. Wow! Oh, hey, Thum! You must have been one of those guys at the Academia who got top grades on everything! Um, Paimon's curious about something, though. You definitely weren't one of those students who needed canned knowledge to graduate from the Academia, right? So, why are you risking getting caught by the mantra for this capsule? Yeah, I'm also curious about this. When you are unable to understand a researcher's actions, most cases can be attributed to curiosity. This is but one theory. Hmm, sounds like you're trying to avoid the question. I believe so too, Paimon. All right, let's begin the test. Just fight as you normally do. Okay. Shine down! Everybody stand back! Think you can get away? Burn! Ah, oh, they're already dead. All right. I'll link your Akasha terminal to record data. The next step is to use this knowledge capsule. Hold it in your hand. I'll help you establish a connection with it so you can activate its power. Uh, so do I have it now? As if I saw countless swords wielding figures fighting one moment and then in the next they disappear into the research of my memory. Hey, how are you feeling? Well, whatever was inside of that knowledge capsule became a part of my memory. You mean that it worked? I guess so. Alright. Time for round two. Fight with the same composure as before. Teamwork is dreamwork! Let's light it up! Torn to oblivion! Ha. Where the enemy said? Oh. Now, I'll start recording data again. Oh, Hatham, how's it going? Well, the knowledge capsule you purchased did improve his combat capability. During the second fight, 
his overall fighting performance increased by 0.073%. That is such a low, low amount. Wait, how much? That's basically zero. Of course, this could be because he is so powerful that the capsule's contents were unable to produce a substantial increase. At the very least, this test allowed me to gain more insight into you two. Our deal seems increasingly worth my investment. I'm heading back to Wakela Funduk. I await your response in two days' time. This is more of for when you ask Dory for information. Pay her as much as she requests. Okay. This is this is new. What is this? I thought it was actually gonna go faster, but no. Oops. There you go. Here, over here. Oh, welcome back, my loyal patrons. What can I do for you this time? You name it. Can knowledge, supplies, or anything else you need. I'll find a way to get it. Where there's a waterfall of Mora, there's a way. Can you really get us anything we want? Anything at all? Uh-huh. So it appears that can knowledge alone is no longer sufficient for your opulent appetite? <sighs> then please, oblige me. Tell me what you have in mind. I'll like to buy info on the whereabouts of the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Oh! <laughs> I knew customers with pockets as deep as yours would undoubtedly crave something more profound than ordinary can knowledge. But you know... That kind of information isn't going to be cheap. After all, I had to work really hard to weasel my way into the auction site. And not to mention that if anyone found out that I was the leaker, I would be in big, big trouble. But how can we be sure your information is accurate? Paimon's curious how you just happen to have this kind of info the moment we need it. <laughs> because to me, anything of value is what I consider to be my supply. Therefore, I must always be aware of what's hot on the market in order to secure more sales. As for the information's authenticity, well, you've no need to worry about that. I used a camera to take a picture of the transaction. That way, no one can dispute it. Okay, well, name your price. Actually, I'll buy the information. It's always a pleasure doing business with such sterling patrons. <clears throat> now that you've paid in full, here's the scoop. The Divine Knowledge Capsule was purchased yesterday by a certain misery, the leader of Ayn el-Ahmar. Uh. 
Ein Al Amar. Ein Al Ahmar. Ahmar. You mean the Aramites who worshipped King Deshrik? Ah, so you're already familiar with them. Kinda. The group has done everything in their power to obtain the Divine Knowledge Capsule. After all, they believe it contains the power of King Deshret. That Divine Knowledge Capsule is unlike any other canned knowledge I've seen before. It was glowing bright red. The capsule is clearly visible in the picture I took. You can look for yourself. Thanks for the info, Yuri. Please, it's my pleasure. It's all thanks to discerning customers such as yourselves that my efforts yesterday were not in vain. Please, don't hesitate to contact me if you ever need anything else in the future. More up for Dory, open stores! Well, we figured out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. It turns out, it ended up in the hands of Ein El Ahmar. Yeah, but where Let's can we... Let's head back and talk to Al Haytham. Oh, God. Uh, I think we can jump through here. Than legend. <laughs> Really? All right. Let's hear it. Yep, it's in the hands of the Einhal Ham Hachma Hachma Einhal Hachma. Dory even gave us evidence to verify the intel. Have a look. Oh, huh, look at that. Clear as day. It must have taken some guts just to infiltrate the scene of the Aramite's transaction. But then, to get close enough to take a picture like this. Bold move, Dory. Very bold move. All right. The person in this picture is indeed Misery, the leader of Ain al Ahmar. And the glowing red capsule he's holding appears to be the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Ain al Ahmar. Hmm. In which case. If we play our cards right, when we confront them next week, we should be able to force them to show their hand. At first, Paimon didn't get why you were provoking these Ein El Ahmar guys. But now, it sort of makes sense. Everything's playing right into your hands. After we defeat them, we can finally have a serious talk with their boss and get them to lend us the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Thank you for your time and efforts. Take a few days off while I make some preparations. Let's meet up again on the afternoon of the arranged date, three o'clock sharp. All right, we'll be there. See you then. See you then. A few days later on the day of the meeting with Enel Chachma. Oh, hey, I'm sure he's taking his time. Where could he be? Oh, there he is. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's head to the pier in front of Faro's lighthouse. Yep, let's go! <laughs> Yahoo! I do wonder how the Archon looks like. I'll hate them. I knew you were crazy, but I didn't know you were crazy enough to actually show up. It was I who demanded that these negotiations take place. I was more worried that you might go back on your promise. But to your credit, it appears that you're sticking to your word. This is turning into quite an occasion. I also brought some backup. I assume you don't mind. Backup? Aren't you the brat from the restaurant the other day? You've come to support this lunatic because he helped you out? <laughs> Fine. Your funeral. 
I'm not going to mince my words. Once we're done with you, you'll be nothing more than fish food. Get him, boys! He really thinks he can do anything to me, huh? Yeah, get yourself in some trouble. Uh-oh. Here they come. Uh, good luck, you two. Let me play as him. I want to see what he does. No. Enough. Oh, well. I'm going in. Let's play. Inazuma shines eternal. Following orders. <laughs> Oh, getting uh, cinematic. Academia scum. <laughs> Show them. Uh, boss, finally. Wait. Did you use it? He Great. Like he's now we can. Uh -huh. Something's what? off with him. Do not impede our work. Is that understood, I'll hate them? Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away! He said it. Wait. Huh? What in Tibet just happened? It's like that big guy suddenly lost his mind. It looks like he used the divine knowledge capsule. Mm, got that, man. The divine knowledge capsule did that to him? Speaking of which, Hypatia did mention. Oh. Yeah, that exactly. I've heard of numerous incidents of researchers in Satyavada life going insane. The state that man is now in suggests that this is a similar situation. This divine knowledge capsule does appear to be linked to the gods, but beyond that, it doesn't seem anything like the rumors suggest. Possessing it doesn't grant you divine wisdom or power. Did you hear what he said? World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? That's exactly what I heard before at Ermenso. If the mantra took him away, then that means the Academia got the Divine Knowledge Capsule back too. Oh, what a shame. We were so close. Yeah, well, things happen. Still, Paimon didn't expect the Divine Knowledge Capsule would be so dangerous. Imagine if we tried to open it. Oh, who knows what would have happened to us. As things stand, there is no reason for me to remain in Port Ormos. I believe our collaboration has also reached its end. Oh, we were so busy trying to find the Divine Knowledge Capsule that Paimon forgot to ask you something. Since you're a member of the Academia, do you have any idea how we could go about meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali? Truthfully, I don't. Lesser Lord Kusanali appears to exist outside of Sumeru's entire administration. Most of the time, 
you wouldn't know she exists at all. Moreover, since the Academia possesses the Akasha, a symbol of our deity's wisdom, scholars have no reason to desire to make contact with the deity herself anyway. Uh, everything about Lesser Lord Kusanali is such a mystery! I'm heading back to the Academia. How about you two? Uh, it's almost the day of the Sub-Zero's festival! Maybe we should head back too. We've been rushed off our feet over the past few days, so maybe a little rest and relaxation will do us good. Yeah, you have a point. Then we'll part ways here, I'll hate them. Until we meet again. Hmm. Now, do I deal with this thing first? Or should I produce the report that the higher ups require? The higher ups? Well, chapter 3, act 1 completed. I'm not walking back. We didn't miss the Sub-Zero's festival, right? Let's hurry and find Dunyarzad! Paimon thinks she must be around the Grand Bazaar since she showed us around there last time. Just as promised, Traveler and Paimon. I'm so glad that you two came back to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. Yeah, and looks like we made it back in time. <laughs> Indeed. The festival's tomorrow. We've been preparing for so long that I can't help but feel a little nervous. There's no need to be nervous. Paimon's sure that Lesser Lord Kusanali will feel everyone's gratitude. <laughs> Thanks, Paimon. I hope that everyone who comes to the festival will also have a good time. Speaking of which, um, did you manage to make your way to Port Ormos? Discover anything over there? Of course we went! A lot of things happened there. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't find any new information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. <sighs> I see. Sounds like you two had another exciting adventure. If there is another chance, I would love to join. My lady, if you went to Port Ormos in your current state, we'd both be in for a lifetime of trouble. Dia! You were eavesdropping! It's called covert protection. Keeping an ear out for what's going on around my employer is part of the job. It's alright, Dia. I merely said I would like to go. I know better than to think my body could handle it. The festival's tomorrow. I've been doing nothing but causing trouble for you. So Dia, please take some time to relax. I'll be fine. Mm, even when you put it that way, it still doesn't feel right. Don't worry, my guardian knight. <sighs> okay, fine, but only tonight. Tomorrow's a big day, and many no-good scumbags are gonna try to take advantage of that. Ah! Oh, uh, you two must be exhausted from your long journey back to the city. Uh, my apologies for not realizing this sooner. I've already prepared a room for you to rest. Please follow me. I'm so ready. Started Act Two. Uh, gotta go sleep. Here we are. It's also fairly close to where I've been staying. It looks really nice! Sorry about the trouble, Dani... Dania Sarat? Dani Harset? Dun... 
Dunihars. Dude, I forgot how to say her name again. Dunsard. <laughs> Not at all. It, just tell me more about your adventures when you next get the chance. That's Paimon's specialty. Paimon can tell you stories next time. Yeah, well, about our plans for tomorrow. Oh, if you don't mind, how about we all walk around together tomorrow? Yeah, that's fair. All of my friends will be working the festival, and Dia is still insisting on her covert protection. Yeah, it'll be pretty hard to relax and enjoy the festival if Dia's constantly hovering over you, right? I'll keep you company tomorrow. Then let's meet at the nearby bazaar first thing tomorrow morning. Have a great night. Yeah. It's a deal. Good night, Dunyarzad. I may be too Dunyarzad. excited to fall asleep tonight. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Hyman started to really look forward to the Sub-Zero Festival too. Well, there oh be my god, you and your food, Paimon, I swear. Oh, no, no. Thinking about food is just gonna keep Paimon up all night. The earlier we sleep, the better. Let's go inside, traveler. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Ah, did we oversleep? I sure hope so, cause... We should go meet Dunyarzad right away! I'm gonna go pee first. I still have a lot to do at the guild. How about you take a rest while I go back? You should really bring the Knights of Favonius with you next time. Alright, we can finally get to see her dancing. Traveler, Paimon, I've been waiting for you two. Good morning, Dunyarzad. We must have overslept a little bit. <laughs> A little bit. Not at all. I arrived early. Oh, today is finally here. I must cherish every moment as if it were gold. You've worked so hard for this day. You gotta enjoy it to the fullest. Yeah, I'm only hoping nothing bad happens. <laughs> you know it. Oh, it's just that, um, as expected, I had some trouble falling asleep last night. I'm hoping my body won't be too much of an issue today. Well, but shall we? Let's start with the stalls over there. 
Many vendors came out of the blue to support the event, and they insisted on covering costs themselves. Let's go give them some business. They paid for everything out of pocket? Oh, sounds like they're not in this just for the Mora. <laughs> they all said that contributing to a lively festival atmosphere is more important than money. Especially since we don't often get to celebrate Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. Aww. This is a stall offering foods from the Haftmewa feast. Oh, you could tell straight away. I thought most people nowadays wouldn't know. Mushrooms, flowers, and all kind of fruit? It's all vegetarian stuff. Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. Oh, you stupid meat lover. Calm down. So, what's the Haftmewa feast you mentioned just now? It's another sub festival tradition. People used to set their tables with seven different foods. Generally speaking, the most common selections were foods like Rukashava mushrooms, Nilo Pala lotuses, Sumeru roses, Sunsetias, Kapalatas, Hara fruits, and Zaytun peaches. So, the sub festival is a vegetarian holiday? <laughs> you don't have to be a vegetarian to enjoy the spread. We just used the seven foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Wait, but if that's the case, if Sumeru uses vegetarian food to represent the Dendro Archon, then wouldn't the Pyro Archon's festival be full of food like roasted fowl, juicy meatballs, Oh my meatballs, god, she's getting too steak. excited. Oh, Traveler, we have to go to Netlon as soon as possible. <laughs> I hope your wish comes true one day, Paimon. This reminds me, we've only met the Archon of, uh, what's it, Ween? No, Anemo, uh, the Lightning one, Dendro, well, not yet, but we will soon. Oh, uh, Earth one, that's three, then Dendro, that's, that's only four Archons. We're missing the Archon, Archon of ice water fire okay i think that's it three right yeah because we met the, the geo one already yeah water ice and fire hmm, interesting dear customers would you like to try your hand at alchemical divination what's alchemical divination those two things sound like they'd be fun to try together. Right? I thought the same when I first heard about it. It is said to be a mysterious craft invented by none other than Lesser Lord Kusanali herself. So, how does it work? It's quite simple. After you give me any two alchemical reagents, I'll use them to perform a random transmutation. Sure sounds random. So random that it will probably fail. <laughs> That is precisely what we need. After the transmutation fails, your one and only diviner here will interpret the remnants. This entire thing is way too random. Well, according to Lesser Lord Kusanali, everything is interconnected. And all that occurs can be traced back to fate. You could say this is a pearl of old wisdom. Hmm. Why does everything sound so much more credible when Dunya Azad says it? Are you guys working together? So that's the true wisdom behind it. This young lady sure knows her stuff. So, how about it? Want to give all it a try? Alright, alright. I guess I can give it a go. Um, I'll use... This and this one. Okay, one moment. 
Hmm. It's the moon. Paimon wants to take a look too. Uh, is it? It looks more like a pie that Paimon bit into. Hmm. <laughs> Generally speaking, the moon signifies. Uh, it means. Uh, oh, nice! You forgot moment. about it, didn't you? Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, I remember now. It means illusions and lies. Nice. Illusions and lies? That sounds rather ominous. Yes. But this book says that if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. He's not even trying to hide his book anymore. Naturally, fate will only ever show you the beginning of a journey. It is up to you to forge your own ending. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Guess that was still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. They say the sub Zeros festival was very lively a long, long time ago. Large flower carriages used to parade through the city. As they headed towards Port Ormos, people would throw flowers, candy, and liquor all along the way. Dunyarzad's eyes are sparkling right now. Oh, I wish I could have seen that spectacle. But if you ask me, I'm sure Nilo's dance of sub Zeros will be just as impressive. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Barris! Barris! Attention! Soldiers, fall into formation if you want any Yalda candies. It's a weird guy with a weird hat! Hey, it's two years on! Wow! <laughs> Miss Dunyarzad, the children love you even more than the Yalda candies. In the few short days it took to prepare for the Sabzeru's festival, the children have all grown very fond of you. Uh, um, the Hallowed Knight of Flowers. It's an honor that you know my name. <coughs> Attention! In the name of Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, I commend you on your contributions to the glorious Sabzeru's festival. All right, little soldiers, take your Yalda candies and don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Ferris! Uh, just what is going on here? <laughs> Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another sub festival icon and one immensely popular with children. In the past, the actor portraying Ferris would also sit on a flower carriage. It's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can make such wonderful memories today. As are we to you, Vihar. Oh, <laughs> not at all. Oh, speaking of tradition, do you want some Yalta candies? They're a festival staple, and I happen to have some boxes readied here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Whichever one? Um, don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> that is the fun part. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, those all sound pretty good. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. <laughs> huh? What's up with those two flavors? Oni kabuto is a little spicier than lizard tail. Tanyarzad, you, you tried them before? Hmm. Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants the Sunsetia flavor. Uh, I doubt I'll be able to get the exact flavor you want. It's all right. Paimon believes in you. All right. I also believe in your intuition. Well. Great. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? I want number four. Yep, it's definitely number four. Is it? <laughs> Excellent work. Oh my that god! Is indeed, Sunsetia. 
No freaking way I guessed it. Paimon Bet used to ride so many epic battles because you had incredible luck, and Paimon was right. Attention! Here's your Sunsetia flavored candy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Knight of Candies. It's Knight of Flowers, not Knight of Candies. <laughs> Paimon really wilted the carriageless Knight of Flowers. They all basically sound the same. We got our candy, so let's keep going. Oh, uh, actually, I just remembered that I left something behind. Um, since you're here, can you come with me to get it? Sure thing. Dunyarzad, you probably forgot because you're so excited about the Sub-Zero's festival. <laughs> ah, how embarrassing. Too late. Who knew the little lady was such an early riser? I know, right? Hey, wait a minute. Puss, isn't that her? Oh, that most certainly is. We're in luck. She's walking right into our clutches. Well, that's not good. Those Aramites don't look like they're up to any good. Who are you? I don't believe the Homayamis hired you. <laughs> That's right. We haven't received any of their mora, but... I wonder how much the Homayamis would shell out to get you back. They're a gang of kidnappers! Traveler, hurry and protect Dunyarzad! Hey, did you scumbags even consider that the Homayamis might have hired a merc that outclasses you? Your... Dia! Dia the Flame Mane. No wonder we mercs haven't heard anything about you for so long. You sold your unruly mane to the highest bidder. Don't speak so disrespectfully. My family started working with her as gratitude for her past kindness to us. Don't worry about it, my lady. Just some friendly banter between mercs. One punch and those rabid dogs will expose themselves for what they really are. <laughs> Aren't your claws all dull by now? Don't get too cocky! Traveler, take Miss Dunyarzad to a safe location. No! We're gonna stay and help! There's too many of them! Uh, we can't guarantee anyone safety here. Mm, you're right. All right, fine. Please be careful, dear. Don't waste your time worrying about me. This is my job. Look out for yourself. After I've wiped the floor with them, I'll go find you all. Really? Time limit? <coughs> oh no. Dunyarzad, Not right now. Are you okay? You look a little pale. Are you in shock? Uh, yeah. I'm fine. My body always reacts like this whenever I exert myself too much. You sure you're okay? I'll be fine after some rest. I'm more worried about Dia. After all, none of this would have happened if I hadn't insisted on coming out today. Don't worry, she's tough. Yeah, don't worry. My lady, traveler, found she, you. She made it. Dia, you took care of them so fast. Any more of them? Or rather, did anyone follow you? Nope. I just checked. Dia, your arm. Oh, this? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. 
Normally, they wouldn't have been able to land a hit on me at all, but I'm still getting used to this new greatsword. Please, let me take a closer look. Come on, it's nothing. Us mercs aren't as fragile as you think. Hold on, you said something about a new greatsword. Uh, what happened to the one you were using before? Uh, about that. Well, I sold it, because I was low on Mora. Stuff like this happens every now and then. It can't be. The anonymous donation that was used for the venue's final round of preparations? <sighs> <laughs> Hey, Miss Dunyarzad, I wasn't trying to make you cry. I'm, I'm not gonna lose my commission because I made my employer cry, am I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, making your employer not. cry won't affect your commission, but selling your weapon without permission and getting hurt? I'll have to reevaluate your performance. Oh my god. <laughs> You're so unreasonable, my lady. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dia. Don't be like that. I get embarrassed really easily. <coughs> Are you feeling unwell again, Dunyarzad? My lady, your condition. Traveler, can you take her somewhere to rest? I'll look around the area to make sure we're safe from an ambush. Yeah, leave it to me. Truly. I'm sorry for the trouble, everyone. Wait, what? How did I... Oh... Are you feeling better, Dinyarzad? Yes, much better. Just give me a few moments and I'll be good to go. Okay, well, just how serious is your illness? I didn't realize you were concerned about it. I guess I shouldn't continue to keep it a secret. I was actually born with Elazar. Oh no. Terminal now. Elazar. Can't believe it's Elazar. Oh, uh, you've already heard of Elazar. In that case, you probably know about its severity. Sumero's current medical advancements still haven't been able to find a cure. The disease's progression can only be delayed through environmental therapy. Dunyarzad. There's no need to be sad. I've always lived with Elazar, and I came to terms with it a long time ago. Compared to the simple fact that I'm afflicted with this, its effects on my life have been much more painful. I know that my family loves me dearly. They've done all they can to provide the best environment for me, so that I can live for that much longer. However, I know I will one day succumb to this. <sighs> Did you know? Before I ran away from home this time, the world outside of my home didn't even know that I existed. Since I was a child, all I could do was sit on my bed and stare at everything outside of my window. I'm sure my family's worried and disappointed in me for running away, but I... I just didn't want to have any regrets. I wanted to meet other people. To me, there's nothing more beautiful than being able to meet and speak with others. Not to mention the incredible time spent preparing for the festival. The joy on everyone's faces here. And all the support I've received from friends like Dia. This way, when my final day does arrive, it will be less sorrowful. At the very least, many people will remember that I once existed in this world. Right? Yes, I will remember you. As long as you don't forget Paimon, Paimon also won't forget about you. Uh, no, even if you forget Paimon, Paimon will still remember you. <laughs> oh, thank you two so much. 
I apologize for the depressing conversation. This is... this is out of character for me. To be honest, Lesser Lord Kusanali gave me the courage to do all of this. If it weren't for her encouragement, I wouldn't have taken that first step. You are already so strong for never giving up. Thanks. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That's a wonderful mindset. Oh, right. Isn't it almost time? Yeah. Huh? Almost time for what? The festival. Isn't the dance of sub Zeros about to begin? It's the part of the festival that I've been looking forward to the most. Nilu will recreate that legendary scene with her most splendid dancing. And the Subzeros Festival will conclude amid everyone's applause and blessings. And with that, my wish will also... Your wish? Then what are we waiting for? Let's go to the stage! Yeah, we should still make it in time. What wish? Were you not aware that the law prohibits this type of performance from taking place without prior permission? Over there! Someone's yelling at Nilu! I think I just saw the Academia's Grand Sage. Why is he here in person? But the dance of sub -Zeros is one of the key parts of the sub -Zeros Festival. If we can't perform it... The sub -Zeros Festival... The law also prohibits the private hosting of large-scale religious festivals. Only the Academia can host such an event. Oh. If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every suck. single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? The Academia was originally responsible for the sub Festival. But they failed this responsibility for many years. I need to speak with them. Well, if we force their hand too much, the situation might get ugly. This is a hard pill to swallow, but... You're right. Things would only get worse. Art. Dance. Aren't you ashamed of pursuing such frivolous and meaningless activities in this land of knowledge and reason? Our Archon created the utopia that is Sumeru City for all scholars who sought validity, verity, and truth, while people like you wish to defile it. No. I believe that our Archon never rejected the arts. Even the Goddess of Flowers dedicated a dance to her. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. How this spice When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will announce it to the public later via the Akasha. Understood. I will inform him when I return. Hmm. The sub -Zeru's Festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Nilu, are you okay? Oh, Dunyarzad. <sighs> you all saw that just now? The Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. Yeah. Let's go somewhere the Academia can't find us and perform there. Ah. Uh. But how do we let everyone know? And what about the atmosphere on the stage? Or we could get people to block them off so they can't interrupt the performance. Ah, no. They just threatened to investigate the organizers. If we were caught... Nilu, it's all right. Don't worry about it. But you've been looking forward to the dance of sub so much. 
And I know how important this festival is to you. I don't want you to have any regrets. It's okay. Seeing you care this much about my feelings is more than enough. It would be too risky to continue the Subzeris Festival at this point. I don't want to get everyone in trouble. If you say so. But... You can sneak out for the next Subzeris Festival, right? We'll make sure the next one is a smashing success. <sighs> the next one. I don't think there's yes. going to be a next one. Okay, it's a promise. It will be a smashing success. I can't believe this is how things turned out. Those heartless geezers. Should we try to think of another way, maybe? It really is okay. There's nothing we can do about it. <sighs> Still, I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Milo's dance. No. <sighs> a lot happened today. It's a shame the festival ended the way it did. Nilo and Dunyarzad promised to make the next Subzeros festival a success. But Dunyarzad is running out of time. I'm sure she knows that very well. All connections have been secured to construct the most stable framework possible. The project is under this most critical phase. Power has begun to flow from. Not at all. I arrived early. Uh, you seem kind of tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. Shall we go? Wait. Let's start with the stalls over there. Sure. Uh, Traveler, why are you just standing there? Let's get going. This... I've done this already. People talking about right before I woke up. This is a stall offering foods from the Hoft Mewa feast. You are quite well informed, miss. I thought most people nowadays would know. They're all plants! Oh, Paimon's a little disappointed. Actually, what is the Hoft Mewa feast you mentioned just now? It's one of the Subzeris Festival's traditions. People used to set their tables with seven different foods to symbolize the seven virtues of the Dendro Archon. Uh, something feels really familiar. It's appeared to be in the form of the moon. Really? I thought it looked like some kind of food. Hmm. The moon signifies... Hmm. It's escaping me for now. Wait a moment. Is he really looking it up in a book? Oh, right. <laughs> it means illusions and lies. But if you trust your intuition and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. I feel like I've heard this before. Understood. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it's nothing. I'm just learning as I go. <laughs> uh. Still pretty interesting. Okay, on to the next stall. So, where to next? 
A flower slide, isn't it? Yeah. Soldiers, now that you have your Yalda candies, don't forget your loyalty to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Dismissed! Yes, Knight Ferris! What's going on? Is this a play? Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is another sub festival icon and one immensely popular with children. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can meet the Knight of Flowers. Oh, do you want some Yalta candies? I happen to have some boxes ready here. Take a look and pick whichever one you want. Yeah. Uh, what's the pick? Don't these boxes all look the same? <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Ooh, how interesting! And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Ugh, why do those flavors even exist? Hmm. Traveler, help Paimon pick one. Paimon wants to eat the sunsetia flavor. Great! These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Uh, number four. It's definitely number four. Ah, excellently chosen. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. <laughs> Paima bet you had incredible luck, and Paima was right! That just now? I don't think that was luck. I don't know why, but I knew it must have been number four. Huh? How's that possible? It's obviously random. Why do I keep having this sense of deja vu? Maybe we didn't sleep very well last night. Or maybe we slept too much. Hmm. I'm sorry, Dunzahar, but I need to leave for a moment. Oh, it, sure. Yeah, that's that exactly. Case, Paimon also felt something like that today. But that's just our brains playing tricks on us, isn't it? So why'd you run here in such a hurry? I want to do something I know. <laughs> I want to see if I can get rid of this deja vu. So that's it. You're intentionally doing you usually wouldn't and seeing if you still get that same feeling of deja vu yes precisely welcome you two are you here for lunch what would you like to eat one charcoal big ahilank cake please got it you don't look like you're from these parts but i gotta say you've got good taste <laughs> i'll give this order to the kitchen Charcoal baked Adelina cake? Isn't it that... that burn thing that didn't look tasty at all? Oh, Paimon understands what you're trying to do now. You'd never normally order something like this. That... thing? Are you really gonna eat it? Yeah. Uh, isn't this going a bit too far? Here it goes. Ha, how was it? The look on your face is telling Paimon that it tasted awful. 
No. It actually tasted really good. Then you mean this flavor? That's impossible. We were just talking about how gross it looked. So would this be a case of taste bud deja vu? Looks like I tried this before. Hyman also gets the impression that we've been here many times, even though we are regulars. Um, how about we go out again and try something else? What a coincidence, Dunyarzad. We meet again. Uh, why are you sitting here all by yourself? Oh, I ran into some kidnappers just now, but thankfully Dia came to my rescue. I started to feel unwell after that, so I sat down here. Kidnappers? Oh my goodness, are you hurt? I'm okay. Dia's arm got scratched, but it isn't serious. Whew. That's a big relief. But, Dunyarzad, you seem a little down today. It's the Subzerus Festival, and you've been looking forward to it so much! Not at all. I've always been like this. Excessive physical exertion or strong emotions tend to aggravate my illness. Besides, no matter how amazing today may be, it is but a single day. After however many more days, my time will come to an end. Paimon doesn't quite follow you, and Paimon feels like something's really got you down right now. I'm so sorry for leaving you behind earlier. It really is fine. I don't mind. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary? Uh-huh. Did something happen? Dunyarzad, have you ever felt deja vu? You know, like when you've already experienced something that's happening right now? Deja vu? No. But my days have been the same for years now. Even if I were feeling deja vu, I suppose I would already be used to it. Oh, Paimon sees. Then... Is it only the two of us? It's almost time. Huh? Time for what? The dance. Nilu's dance of Subzerus is about to begin. Uh, let's go. With your lack of intellectual credentials, I do not believe you are qualified to debate with me. What you should be doing is finding workers to tear down this ridiculous eyesore. When we return, have the scribe draft an ordinance before the next Nyagarbaha day that prohibits public art performances. We will publicly announce it later through the Akasha. Understood. I will inform him when I return. <sighs> The Sub Zero's festival. Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Zod, the Grand Sage ordered us to stop the performance. It's okay. There's nothing we can do about it. But you've been really looking forward to this. I don't want you to have any regrets. 
It truly is unfortunate, but I don't want to cause trouble for anyone. Didn't the Grand Sage say that he might investigate the organizers? True, but... Uh, well, okay. I'll just have to try again next year. <sighs> the next festival. I probably won't be around by then. Wait, what did you just say? That was new. Uh, no, nothing. I'll be heading back to rest. Thank you for your help, everyone. Hyman can't believe what those heartless geezers did! For some reason, I felt like this outcome was in inevitable. Did Dunyarzad already go back? We should also return and get some sleep. Hmm. You still couldn't figure out what that deja vu feeling was all about? Hmm... Maybe it really was because of exhaustion. I hadn't thought about it, but my head does feel very heavy. Same here. That's why Paimon stopped thinking about it halfway through the day. <sighs> then, how about we settle in and get a good night's sleep? For now, we can chalk things up to exhaustion. We can do more thinking tomorrow. Observing a modest drop in the output of Nyana energy, but values still remain within normal parameters. Continue to monitor for variances in the data and find the cause as soon as possible. What the hell? Right away. <laughs> this is definitely a loop. What the hell? Not at all. I arrived early. Huh? Paimon thinks you sound kinda tired. Did you not get enough sleep? I'm doing well. There's no need to worry. She... Shall we go? Let's start with the stalls over there. She sounds a lot going. worse. Travis? What a strong sense of deja vu. <laughs> it's all thanks to Miss Dunyarzad's sponsorship that the children can enjoy the Sabzeru's festival. Oh, are you interested in Yalda candies? I have some boxes of candy here. Pick whichever one you want. Have a choice. All these boxes look the same. <laughs> it's not that simple. Each box contains a random flavor. It's up to the luck of the draw. Flavors include lavender melon, hara fruit, sunsetia. Mmm, they all sound pretty tasty. And there's also lizard tail and oni kabuto. Choose Paimon wants to eat the Sunsetia flavor. No problem. These boxes of candy are numbered one to five from left to right. Which one do you want? Number four, number four, number four, number four, number four. Oh, -ho, I like your confidence. No hesitation at all. Oh, congratulations. Number four is indeed Sunsetia. Oh god, multiple ah, times. Paimon knew he always had incredible luck. 
number one is laser tail, huh? that you already knew which flavor was in each box. What? He was right about all of them? That couldn't have been luck. How, how is this possible? I packed all those boxes this morning and they've been sealed ever since. You couldn't have known beforehand. Mind reading? X-ray vision? Or some kind of magic trick? This is way too freaky. Wait, who's that? Just now, that was... Hey, where are you going? Couldn't be... The Denture Archon? We kind of look like Paimon though. She's very small. Over there. That's... Wait, the bird. Okay. She was still with us just a moment ago. What's happening here? Why are there two Dunyarzads? You already know that this isn't your first sub festival, don't you? Hmm? I'm sure you already know how to use this. A knowledge capsule? Where did you get it? What's inside? Is it the divine knowledge capsule? You should use it too, Paimon. And this is the same voice from the vision she had. Well, let's use it together, Paimon. Well, this seems kind of sketchy, but Paimon feels like this is what we should do. So many days worth of memories. This is our twentieth time at the Sub Zero. Huh? huh? No. The thirtieth? Fortieth? Just how many times have we been to the Sub Zero's festival? Have we been trapped in a single day? If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have even realized. What the heck was inside that knowledge capsule? Hmm. Your memories are still scrambled? Try your best to remember. This isn't the first time we've met, and I answered that question a long time ago. Uh, let Paimon think. Oh, it's 
coming back. Meeting you was the real catalyst for restoring our memories. And the knowledge capsule was just your means of showing our minds the way. Uh, what about everyone else? Why are you only helping the two of us? Your sense of deja vu is stronger than everyone else's, yes? As for an explanation, you two received the blessing of Dendro. And you also have special, sensitive constitutions. It was as if a single sheet of paper was separating those memories from your consciousness. So what's wrong with Densar... Donny Arsar... Donny Arsar? Donny Arsar over there. A familiar question. I think this is the seventh time you asked that. As you can see, she isn't doing well. You probably sensed it too. The Dunyarzad you were just with is different from the first Dunyarzad you met. That first Dunyarzad is in front of you right now and... She doesn't have a lot of time left. Okay, well... What I need to do right now is... <laughs> Looks like you're almost done sorting out your brain. Oh yeah, I'm Nahida. I know. You introduced yourself before. Good. You passed the test. What's happening? You can awaken our memories, and you seem like you know what's going on. Oh, wait. Please don't tell Paimon even you don't know. Everything in this world runs in a loop. This cycle is called the samsara. You, me, and everyone else are all stuck inside the one-day samsara. As for the truth, that's on you to find out. If you were told the truth instead of discovering it yourselves, it would literally blow your minds. I don't know how you'd be after that. I can only give you surface-level help, like bits of information and subtle hints. For the rest of the time, I'll be doing all I can to slow down Dunyarzad's illness. She looks like she isn't doing well at all. Her illness gets worse after each Sub-Zero's festival. If we can break out of the Samsara, I might be able to save her. But as things are right now, she's just a small bird in the sky that's about to lose its last feathers. All I can do is raise a gale to delay her fall. You sure love to use weird analogies. <laughs> analogies are wonderful tools. They let you use existing knowledge to understand unfamiliar things. Okay, so... With what you know so far, what do you think the truth is? Hmm... Let me connect my thoughts. When you enter a state of contemplation, you can choose any text entry to interpret it. The interpretation process involves analyzing of the text entry and might yield new entries. Once interpreted, you might submit the text as a conclusion. Some text entries can be associated with one another once interpreted. Select associate to choose the other text entry. Then select trigger association. You can gain new text entries by performing accurate accurate associations. If one of the text entries on the current page can be used as a conclusion, then select that entry before choosing submit conclusion. Okay. The uh, Surreal Festival. Samsara. We've already experienced the sub -Zeru's festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. Okay. What's happening right now seems to have happened before. This feeling has been getting stronger and stronger. The moon, illusions, and lies. What do they all mean? 
My mind feels exhausted, even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? That should be it. And the flow of time is endlessly cycling within one single day. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? The Grand Sage said, My mind feels exhausted. What's happening right now? The moon? A time loop. You've given similarly wrong answers in the past. Oh my god, what okay. do you mean? Still the wrong answer? Paimon thought that made a lot of sense. It feels like time's just repeating itself. A simple time loop can't explain some of the phenomena. You two are still missing a lot of information. Unfortunately, I can't give you any more hints. <coughs> The Subzerus Festival is happening every day, but that doesn't mean we can waste an infinite amount of them. Hurry and find the truth before today's festival ends. Let's think about our current situation. To save Dunyarzad, we have to escape the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. And to do that, we need to figure out what's happening. The truth. Nahida rejected the idea of a time loop, so... We must have missed something, right? Paimon's memories say that we've already done this many times, but... Let's go talk to people again. It's more productive than sitting here and scratching our heads. Why don't we start with... Those stall owners! I mean, I'm guessing it has something to do with the voices that we hear before waking up each time. Hey there! Hey, it's you guys again. Where's your cultured friend? She... Uh, she's feeling a little unwell. I see. Did you come back to buy something? I guarantee the freshness of my products. I harvested them from the forest just yesterday. Have you felt anything strange lately? Huh? What brought this about? I hurried back from the forest yesterday, and I'm selling protos here today. I haven't felt anything strange. Hmm, um... To put it another way, if you really, really think about it, was yesterday truly yesterday? Did you actually come back from the forest yesterday? What kind of philosophical nonsense is this? Are you two daydreaming? Didn't you know that no one dreams in Sumeru? Go somewhere else if you want to find someone to daydream with. <laughs> Actually has a point. Is this a dream? Is everyone dreaming? Well, I remember what he said just now. Hmm. True. It's so weird that people here don't dream. Why is that? Anyway, if this all really were just a dream, we would have woken up a long time ago. Hmm. Let's keep asking around. Oh, 
Oh, it's you two. Was my divination so accurate that you felt compelled to compliment me in person? Well, I actually did run into a situation. Ooh, I knew it. I told you, the god's divination is highly accurate. You just hadn't fully understood its significance yet. <laughs> You're really excited about this, huh? That's exactly why we came back. Help us better understand it. Uh, help you better understand it? W well, <laughs> that isn't exactly what I excel at. So, you're admitting that you don't have a clue? Anyway, what kind of situation did you get into? Uh... We're all trapped in the day of this, uh, Sapsur's festival. Uh, uh, hold on a second. I thought you guys just lost your wallet or, or fell for a scam. What you just said... Are you serious? Does that kind of thing actually happen in real life? Paima knew you weren't going to believe it. Marvelous. Truly marvelous. I believe you. Recall the interpretation of your divination. The moon, illusions, and lies. It really felt like an omen. When you say it like that, the divination does sound like it's related to what's going on. Can you read any more into it? I believe that the Archon's revelations are never more than vague hints. Anything more specific is beyond the reach of mere mortals. The book only says, If you trust your instincts and overcome your fears, the sun will surely rise. So that's how it is. Looks like fortune telling is just fortune telling. It's no good for practical problems. They haven't made any progress. Who else can we talk to? Well, let's start talking to Deha again. Hmm, Paima remembers that we tried talking to her a couple of times, but she always thinks we're playing pranks on her. You think she'll brush us off again? Well, let's start taking her to see the real Don Arsard. Dia's strong sense of responsibility as a mercenary, then she'll definitely take us seriously. Hmm, at this time of day, Dia's probably just finished beating up those kidnappers. Let's go find her. Uh, it's slower actually. Okay. I'm fine, my lady. It's just a scratch. Perfect timing. Both of you are here. Paimon, traveler, you came at just the right time. Listen, there was a dangerous get. Yeah, you just defeated a gang of kidnappers. Huh? You saw? Then why didn't you jump in earlier? If someone was protecting Miss Dunyar's odd, I could have went all out. <sighs> anyway, can you do something for me? Do you want the traveler to take Dunyar's odd somewhere to rest up while you check to see if there's still any kidnappers around? Did Paimon get that right? How did you know what I was going to say? We need to say something convincing. I know. They ask Claymore. Dia sold her greatsword to raise additional funds, and then she was injured because she wasn't used to her new weapon. Tell her, traveler. You, you got injured because you aren't used to your current greatsword. Actually, you sold your greatsword to support the festival. I didn't tell anyone about that. Including Miss Dunyarzad, you couldn't have known. And just now, you literally took the words right out of my mouth. What's going on? Alright, so this is the situation. <laughs> it's 
kind of hard to believe what you just told me. First, let me make something clear. Most of us desert dwellers might not be the scholarly type, but we do have basic common sense. Haven't you noticed something off about Don Tahar? She's quieter than usual. Uninterested in anything and really gloomy. Yeah, she isn't the same as before, but her parents said that this is how she was like at first. Huh? At first? I don't quite understand what you're all talking about. I'll go rest on the bench over there. My lady, are you angry? Come with me. I'll show you some evidence. All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt since you knew about my greatsword. Let's make this a quick trip. Miss Dunyarzad isn't completely safe here. Hopefully she can see them both. Nahida, we brought a friend. Are you busy? I thought I told you that it won't help to bring anyone here. We just wanted her to see the real Dunyarzad's condition. The real Dunyarzad? Uh, where and who are you talking uh, to? Oh, she can't see anything. you that you two are special other people can't see me or miss dunyar's out here hold on over there is that wait you can see her Perceptive. Does she have invisible antennae? Miss Dunyarzad, she's she's lying down here, isn't she? How's she doing? Her Not condition's so well. really bad, and she's basically in a coma. How did you know she was here? I can sense her aura. I <clears throat> there are also lingering feelings of something like regret or disappointment. What happened? Do you believe us now? The Subzero's festival has been repeating itself. So, you think the sages are behind this? Yeah, they've always been against us. Wouldn't surprise me if they're using the Akasha to intentionally repeat the Subzero's festival as a sick joke. Hmm, you have a point. Aside from the Dendro Archon, the Academia Sages are the only ones in Sumeru who could pull off something like this. Maybe there's more to the Akasha than we know. Nahira, can you tell us anything about the Akasha? Right! Didn't you awaken our memories using something that looked like a knowledge capsule? That means you must know something about the Akasha! The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. A Gnosis can do that? No wonder the Akasha is so magical. It's being powered by the Gnosis of Sumeru's Archon. So, uh, this Nahida you mentioned, what did she say? She said, and Paimon quotes, the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. Compiles the wisdom of the entire populace and grants knowledge to the people. Mm, wait. Wait, what's up? I get the grants knowledge part. That's what people have always used the Akasha for, but 
compiling the entire populace's wisdom? How does that work? Did she mean that the sages enter new knowledge into the Akasha? <laughs> Most information in the Akasha comes from Imran Soul. Oh, yeah. That sounds about right. What do you think? Well... People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. People in Sumeru. My mind feels exhausted. What's happening right now seems to have happened before. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. Ah, goddammit. People in Sumeru don't dream. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha rel My mind feels exhausted. Even though I haven't done too much thinking. What is going on? That doesn't sound right. You mean the Akasha is causing our mental fatigue? Huh. Now that I think about it, my head's been feeling unusually heavy. When the desert dwellers set off on their quest for knowledge, a sage once said, knowledge always comes at a price. Compiling the entire country's knowledge. You think the Akasha pulled a 180 and is extracting information from us? But how would it do that? Who knows? The Akasha can put knowledge into our heads, so who's to say that it can't also poke around in there? We don't know any specifics. What's the point of doing something like that? Just think about it. If you could combine the knowledge of every single person in Sumeru, then you can basically turn Sumeru City into a single massive brain. This hive mind could make breakthroughs and problems that even the smartest geniuses can't crack. An excellent deduction. And the analogy comparing Sumeru City to a massive brain? <sighs> I love it. In that case, we should take off our Akasha terminals right away. Maybe that'll solve this problem. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Yeah, I was only wearing this for show in the first place. Didn't expect the sages to cook up such a conspiracy. <sighs> Mark my words, when this is over, I'm getting evidence and exposing this whole thing to the public. How does everyone feel? Actually, I also noticed something else. Huh? There's always this son of a beep. Oh, that! Paimon knows what you're talking about! It's a single soft beep that sounds like it's coming from the Akasha terminal! The sound of a beep? Could it be a prompt tone for when the Akasha is operating? I heard the same sound in Port Ormos. That's probably an important clue. We weren't using our terminals, but we heard a beep anyway. There you go. There it is. Traveler, did you hear that? Yes. I heard it too. Our ears aren't messing with us. There was definitely a beep, but it sounded like it was coming from inside my head. We took off our Akasha terminals. Huh? Phase runtime has exceeded its expected length. At this rate, there may be casualties. But we cannot lose all of our progress. I 
remembers everything. <laughs> Good. You adapted quickly this time. At the end of the last night. We definitely took off our Akasha terminals last night, but we still heard that beep. Why is that? We've been implanted with another form of terminals. <sighs> but now we can at least confirm one thing. The Akasha definitely has something to do with whatever's trapping us in this cycle. Oh, Paimon doesn't get it. Why would the Akasha go this far if all it wants is everybody's wisdom? It's extremely difficult for lab rats in an experiment to understand why they're being treated the way they wow. are. Wow. If we're lab rats, then what are you? Nahida, you've never told us anything about yourself. Hmm. I guess... I'm the moon. The moon? Wasn't that the result of our divination? Uh. Anyway, knowing who I am won't help you get closer to the truth. So you should focus on other things. Don't get distracted and miss any clues. <sighs> okay then. Dia helped us a lot yesterday, so let's go find her. If Paimon's reading the time correctly, those kidnappers should be showing up soon. Ah, there you are. I've already taken care of those kidnappers. My lady, did you get hurt? Hold on, something is not right. <gasps> Dia? Oh no. What's Her wrong? arm. Why are you both gawking at me like that? You, you didn't get hurt this time. Huh? What do you mean this time? Why are you so surprised that I managed to get out unscathed? Those kids were amateurs. Aren't you still getting used to your new great sword? Shh. How did you know about my great sword? I haven't told anyone about it. Please, don't tell Miss Dunyar Zad. So Dia's lost her memories after all. Did anything feel strange? Anything strange? You already know that I got a new great sword. Hmm. If I had to say something, it's weird how such a new weapon could feel so familiar. Ah, uh, cause she. It's as if I've already used yeah. it to fight a countless number of battles. You're saying that although you don't remember using it, your body feels like it does. That's right. Both mercenaries and warriors heavily rely on muscle memory. Only knowing the theory of battle won't get you anywhere. Traveler, what do you think? <sighs> Could it be because we remove our Akasa terminals? Yeah! Hyman's feeling really hopeful! Is it possible that we have already broken free? We'll know for sure at the end of the day. I have no clue what you two are talking about, but it's still dangerous here, so... So you want us to take Dunyar's odd somewhere else to rest while you check if there are still more kidnappers around, right? Yeah, exactly. How did you know what I was gonna say? Can you read minds? Uh, uh, forget it. Go and do your thing. Huh. I guess you'll find out. The moment of truth. Whew. It's finally night time. Aside from Dia not getting injured, everything seems to have stayed the same. Hmm. Listen, Nahida. We found out that Dia got out just fine today. Even though she got injured every other time she fought the kidnappers. Do you think the samsara has been broken? Have we saved Dunyarzad? Really? Good job on all that progress. Get some good sleep tonight. Hey, what kind of an answer is that? <laughs> Tomorrow will come. Everyone assumes this is common knowledge, but the only way you can know that for sure is if you experience tomorrow. How many todays has it been? 
Is it possible that today will be followed by yesterday? Does tomorrow truly exist as anything beyond a made-up concept? It's even possible that this entire world is a lie, and the history of the whole world has just been one endless Sub-Zero's festival. Okay, okay, no more! Paimon's brain is already shut down! <laughs> That's why it makes no sense to waste your energy thinking about things you will learn tomorrow. Get some good rest. You know, use the bathroom and flush your anxiety dookie away. Uh, uh, huh? Hold on, what did you just say? Did Paimon hear you correctly? Huh? People always say they feel a sense of relief after they take a duke duke. That's why I suggested you could try that. <laughs> Is that so strange? Uh, it's so strange and so against common sense that... Paimon's at a loss for words! You were sounding kind of smart just a minute ago. <laughs> yeah, well, we're gonna go get some rest. Yeah. Even though it's happy and lively at the Sub-Zero's festival every day, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really gotten to relax. Uh, let's go back to our room. Oh, the freaking beep again. Continue the harvest. Compared to what we stand to achieve, these sacrifices are trivial. We're still in the same day. X expected. It's not as simple as we thought. You already knew last night that we didn't break out of the Simsara? Why didn't you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> She's so Would mad. there have been a point? You that spent the night with new worries, with tomorrow still out of reach. In that case, you might as well rest within that brief moment of hope. An opportunity like that doesn't come by often, and I thought it might help you clear your minds. I'm that the Duke Duke did that! <laughs> well, whatever. Looking out for us after all. <laughs> of course. In the time we've been together, you two have been everything to me. Uh, Paimon's flattered and everything, but maybe you're taking things a little fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, even though I had asked you to solve this puzzle, you two are still the only ones who can see me and sense my presence. In other words, if you weren't here, I may as well not exist. That's why you two have been everything to me. Get it? Oh, wait. Nahida's talking about confusing stuff again. She's been always anyway, there, that's but... Enough chit -chat. So, Traveler, did the new clues yesterday help you gain a new understanding of the situation? The time loop theory is indeed incorrect. Huh? He has fighting skills have been improving. Oh yeah, you're right! Gosh, how did we not notice that? In a simple time loop, people's physical conditions should also reset. So, what's your new hypothesis? The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We still hear it every night, even though we removed our Akasha terminals. Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. We've already experienced the sub- Mercenaries rely heavily on muscle memory. And Dia was able to use her experiences to avoid injury in later samsara cycles. The moon, illusions, and lies. What did they all mean? If all our memories of a day are erased at the end of that day, then we would unwittingly relive the same day again and again. Hmm. 
Instead, our memories are being erased at the end of each day. Oh, then the beep we hear every night could just be indicating the deletion of our memories. That's why when we wake up, everyone thinks the Sub-Zero's festival hasn't happened yet. It's already the next day, but everyone still thinks it's the day before. But muscle memory can't be erased. That's why Dia has been getting better at using her great sword. Now everything makes sense. Hmm, a brilliant deduction. Okay. But Nahida, tell us if we're right or wrong. To put it simply, it's as if you've mistaken a pyro crystal fly for a firefly in the night. You lost sight of its true nature because you focus too much on your perception that it glows. Still the wrong conclusion, huh? Why don't you go talk to Miss Dia again? You might learn something new. Right! She did help us find our latest clue after all. Let's go! There you are. Really took me a while to find you. As expected, Dia also didn't get hurt today. Get hurt? Why would I? Don't underestimate me. Well, you're still getting used to your new greatsword. Huh. Truth be told, I also think it's pretty strange. It just suddenly felt so familiar in my hands and... Uh, wait a second! How did you know I got a new greatsword to begin with? I didn't tell anyone about it. Traveler, could you explain the situation to her today? Paimon's gotten a little sick of doing it. Let's just go straight to the point. Oh. You suddenly became proficient with your great sword because our memories of the day are are erased every night. What happened to you guys while I was gone? Did you get brainwashed by some cult? too hard about it just take what we're saying at face value all right then let me get this straight you're telling me that my body's already gotten used to this great sword but my brain just doesn't remember it correct yes your memory is being erased every day then i'd have to disagree that's impossible oh why do you so? think that if we've actually been reliving the Subzerus festival day after day then what happened to the things we used the money we spent, the food we ate. Common sense says my wallet should have emptied itself a long time ago. There's no way I wouldn't have noticed that. I thought about that too. If they utilize the entire city resources, as well as information supplied by the Akasha. Right. They could use the Akasha to record what everyone did that day, and then use the city's resources to replenish everything. It's not very likely, but it's also not impossible. No, it is impossible. I've got proof. You have proof? Where? <sighs> you two are surprisingly serious about this nonsensical discussion. Fine, I'll play along for a little longer. Come with me, Miss Dunyarzad. Please come along as well. I still can't guarantee that this area is safe. Paimon can't believe it's Dia who wants to show us something this time. Two days ago, we were the ones taking her to see Dunyarzad.
This is it. Huh? This is a wooden training dummy. What about it? See those marks on the dummy? Those are the result of several days' worth of practice. Let's say the sages didn't replace it every day. Shouldn't it be hacked to pieces by now? That's true, but what if they did? Then the sages would have had to reproduce every mark I left during previous training sessions. I'm a professional fighter. My martial school has always emphasized the importance of refined control. The force, angle, and entry point of each strike is calculated and deliberate. That's why I remember every mark on the dummy, as well as my state of mind as I made each strike. It's just as they say, each swordsman has their own unique style. And even the same swordsman can't make the same cut twice. It would be impossible to copy these marks. Is it really impossible? <gasps> What if they use some fancy machine to carve every single mark? People often say that a camera's photo can never replace an artist's painting because the former has no spirit to it. The same thing applies here. At a mere glance, I can differentiate carved marks from the results of combat training. Well, it seems we'll have to abandon this theory. <sighs> I hope that cleared things up for you. Hey, is this that new brain exercise game that's been super popular with the scholars lately? It's surprisingly fun. Anyway, it's getting late. I should escort Miss Dunyarzad to Milu's stage. See you later. Well, back to square one. Is our memory deletion theory also wrong? <sighs> but at least we've reached some other conclusions in the meantime. Yeah, we're not in a time loop. True. So, can we think of any new ideas right now? I suddenly realized that something is strange. Strange? Paimon feels like everything's been strange lately. How come we never thought about leaving the city? Huh? Leaving the city? You're right! It's really strange how we never thought of such a simple solution! Many things should become clear if we can confirm the flow of time outside of the city. Paimon can't believe it. Did we miss this because we're tunnel visioning too hard on our other theories? Or because we're just too tired? Yeah, we should have thought about this long time ago. How about we go back and ask Nahida? Maybe we've forgotten something about leaving the city. back early today. Did you find something new? Sort of. We're mostly sure now that we're not in a time loop. And we also aren't in the real world. But at the same time, we have a new question. Have we ever tried leaving the city? Hmm, leaving the city. As far as I remember, you've mentioned your plans to do that twice before. Huh? We did? We don't remember anything. What happened after we talked about those plans? What did we say when we got back? <sighs> Let me think. I don't think you ever actually told me what the outcome was. Oh, it's probably more accurate to say that both times, you never came back the whole night. But you two sometimes stay out the entire night anyway, so at the time, I didn't think too much about it. It is true that sometimes we lose track of time during our investigations. Before we know it, it'll already be the next day. But still, neither of us remember anything about leaving town. Really? That's kind of strange. In theory, I should have already awakened all your memories. Well, maybe this is the key. Yep. Something here is definitely fishy. Let's get to the bottom of this tomorrow. Oh. The beep. Our memories are back! Well, let's go and try to leave the city today. Uh, about that. Well, where should Paimon begin? Uh -huh. 
Paima? What do you mean? Traveler, aside from your memories that were just restored, I have another message for you. Another message from who? Listen to it and you'll understand. Okay. I can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. This my own boys? Traveler, you should be missing two days worth of memories. Paimon will fill you in. Alright. It's time to carry out our plan from yesterday. Well, let's go and try to leave the city today. Okay. Why can't we leave the city? What is the academia up to now? Don't ask me. It's not like I can tell you anything. This is a direct order from the Grand Sage. Just wait until tomorrow. I have a real emergency. My goods have already arrived at Port Ormos. If I don't hurry, they'll be stolen. That's your problem. Make sure you make a request in advance next time. But, but it's not like you can just predict business matters in advance. <laughs> it looks like the Academia already announced a lockdown for Sumeru City today. How completely unsurprising. Let's go and question them. Hello, sir. Why can't we leave the city today? Here we go again. Don't ask me. I don't know either. We just received an order that no one is allowed to enter or exit Sumeru today. They didn't tell us anything else. So that Kneme doesn't trust you at all. <laughs> Angering me won't get you anywhere. If I had that kind of insider info, I would have left this stupid post long ago. It looks like he really doesn't know. If we can't get anything out of him, let's take matters into our own hands. Why don't we climb over the walls? Those guards can't be everywhere at once. This is a good spot, and the guard hasn't noticed us at all. Let's hurry! Paimon, stay here. Huh? Why? Are you going to leave Paimon behind? Well, even the city might trigger disruption to our memories. Don't worry, Paimon. Mm. I'll be fine. Okay. Paimon will wait for you. Promise Paimon that you'll come back as soon as possible. Just a quick look. Yeah, okay, okay. And please, be careful. Well, let's go and try to leave the city today. Uh huh? What's wrong, Paimon? Paimon, that Paimon would never see you again. You, you just disappeared. Paimon waited for you for hours and hours at the city wall, and you never came back. You promised Paimon that you were only taking a quick look. <laughs> What did I promise? Paimon, calm down. He's here now. I don't think he understood what you were saying. <laughs> Paimon doesn't care. Paimon wanted to go look for you, but you also said that Paimon should stay. Paimon was so worried and so scared the entire day. Although I don't remember doing any of this. I won't leave you behind. <gasps> You. The most important thing is that you didn't actually disappear. Oh, Paimon was so scared that you had gone into another world. Okay, Paimon, can you tell us your perspective of what really happened yesterday? Hmm, I see. 
using two people's different perspectives. After that, you left the city. Paimon kept her eyes on you the whole time, but then you... disappeared in an instant. You sure that's what you saw? You weren't zooming out or anything? No way! Paimon was watching you with the fullest attention! What's your perspective, Traveler? You sure you don't have any memory of this? Yeah, I don't even know that I guess they existed. I guess that explains everything. You also lost your memories the last two times you tried to leave the city. Those days' memories can't be awoken. So, if we leave the city, our memories will be completely erased? So... They're also erasing the memory of those who leave? No. So they you they didn't just restrict access to Sumeru City. It really sounds like something big outside of the city is being hidden on purpose. But this way, we'll also never discover what's outside. Can we leave behind something other than memories? Something like a message? But how can we send it back? D don't look at me like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to being stared at. Well... Okay, okay. You want something that can pass on messages, right? Give me some time and take care of doing yours out for me. Yep, now we're talking! Oh, so this is how I ended up giving myself the message. are already capable of sending messages. I just tweaked it so that it could connect to any node. To make something like this? Nahida, you really know the Akasha like the back of your hand. Anyway, we can use this now to record a message, right? Yep. <laughs> I'll help you save the messages. It should be pretty easy to use. I just can't guarantee the user's status and signal coverage when they're outside the city. We'll never know until we try. At least we're taking the initiative now. It's worth a try. Let's go then. Let's expose those sages. Well, I still think you should stay. <sighs> Alright. Paimon isn't as worried about being separated since it happened once yesterday. But Paimon still isn't happy about it. Yeah, well, see you tomorrow, Paimon. Covers everything that's happened so far. <sighs> so that message. Yes, although the signal was choppy and had some interference, we still managed to receive two messages from you when you were outside. Okay, now that you understand what's going on, let's hear the messages together. I can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzeru's festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. Unbelievable. 
And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... No. I actually what? Tell me. Probably because yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. Hmm. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? My impression is that each day in this samsara only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow, the Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Hmm, a secret, huh? Give me some time. I need to organize my thoughts. Hey, where are you going? Is the whole thing gonna pass? The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. The dance of Subzero is that time already? Okay. stuff to do first okay then I'll see you later have you figured it out yet traveler time is ticking away well i think i know the answer now awesome what is it kaima wants to know oh wait no let's meet up with nahida first you can tell us both together this time we're gonna get to the truth
Oh my god, you tilted to me. <laughs> You're back. I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? Ask away, Miss Nahira. <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? Okay. Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation. We've already experienced the Subzerus festival many times, and the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common, a lack of human presence. And those spaces remind me of dreams, like the one I had in the Avidia Forest, except these have no sign of human presence. The moon, illusions, and lies. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. Well, this one must be connected to this over here. We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha oh, is taking God. their dreams okay. from them. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now. Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? Hmm. The Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate. It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace. And it grants knowledge to the people. That doesn't sound right. I need to carefully think things through. Uh... That doesn't... Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But... Is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? Isn't there anything more to it than that? Dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Parma remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. And the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Rukadavada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Yes, and they don't intend to stop there. Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the Samsara? The beep is a prompt tone for Akasha operations. We still hear it every night, even though we removed our Akasha terminals. Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing, but as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? My mind feels ex- We've already experienced the Subzerus festival many times, and 
The day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. Hmm. I can't seem to cohesive. Hmm. Hmm. is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival. The dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay. So that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything! Alright, last question. Who am I? Well, that's a simple one. You're the moon. They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the moon... <laughs> so you noticed. Yes, you are Lesser Lord Kusanali. Uh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. <sighs> that wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you at all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali, Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Well, I have a lot of questions for you. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. Why couldn't you just simply, simply tell us the truth? You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Hmm. About the side effects of a mash produced produced dream. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with. Like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! Why is a dream about the Seth Service Festival, though? I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow, now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information? Hmm. 
the Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? Okay, Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It... And those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avid... Celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean... Yeah, it must be... Well, I have any more questions. Saving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun. It is long gone. A sun and a moon? Uh, Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today. I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. Uh oh, no. Now that no. remembers everything, should we instead say good morning, where, Master Lord Kusanali? Where is she? <sighs> hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. Worse than our thought. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Oh, no. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way. Are, are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. We were so close. Paimon can't believe it. Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarizad. Puppets are stiff and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all... They're just there as filler. And you know, speaking of which, the old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her. So you do remember her after all. Yes. Back then, her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom, so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... You're a kind Archon. Far from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subzerus Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nahida! Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad! To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? 
Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you'd naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind, and the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. So, we just find the host, then what? Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker! It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me... I know who that might be. Uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Nari and Go! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarza to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish, but fate was against her. I just feel so demoralized. Yeah, saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering. Do you think the sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? Unlikely. An unsuspecting host will be less likely to realize this is a dream. Huh. That's true. Plus, the sages probably weren't counting on there being other factors beyond their control. Like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? The one with the strange get up? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, is a symbol of the wholesome Zerus festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we? Hmm. I actually thought it was gonna be the the girl that it was supposed to dance. You're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? 
An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you... make a wish? Imagine your wish coming true before your very eyes. You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub -Zero's festival tradition or something? What questions for wishing? Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but no. I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. Oh. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So, you have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zeru's festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her Knight of Flowers for the rest of my life. Oh. 50 years, 100 years, I'll serve her till the end Is of time. Is this why you keep dreaming about this? Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay, I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh, oh. You're... What? Fucky? Uh, sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> uh, nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Dunyarzad loves her, but none of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Tia! Oh, right. This is when Dunyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. I'll teach them a lesson they will not forget. It's you. Great timing. Please take... Leave this guy to me. Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You're wasting your breath. You... Ugh, fine, alright. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. Yeah, I'll be fine. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. Do not even. Everybody stand back. Let's light it up. Time for takeoff. Yahoo! That's the following orders. Now you shall perish. <laughs> Shine down! Huh? <laughs> Let's play! Nice! Burn. 
Ah, I didn't hit him. Yahoo! I'm fine. <sighs> you and Nahida both. Dinyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Ah, yes, I do remember that. Okay, so Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub Zero's festival. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but desperate times call for desperate measures. It's all right, Paimon. Hey, the windows are unlocked. Okay, uh, Paimon's gonna take a peek inside. This was only a temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Oh god, that's a lot. <laughs> After almost 16 days, I was finally able to get those knots written before the Svatsur's festival. Once the festival ends, you and Paimon will probably continue your journey immediately. So I was hoping that I'll be able to give you the I'll be able to give to give you this to you before that. This is an accompli this is a comp compilation of folk legends concerning Leslie Kusanali. Created from a series of interviews that I conducted in succession and wrote down. I interviewed so many people, but I'm afraid that there was a, there was a very few who knew much about her. Still, I hope that this will be of use to you in your search for her. Granha Village water supply was once contaminated, forcing everyone to go very far out to go to get water. But one day. People suddenly found out that the water was drinkable again, and some said that a green light was seen near the water source the previous night. Everyone believes that this was the divine power of Lesser Lord Kusanali at work. This sounds quite possible, that the contamination of water source via natural means probably takes ages. Did Lesser Lord Kusanali appear in Kongarva village then? After Mama passed away, I was super afraid of dark and couldn't sleep, but from one day on, I will hear a voice that will chat with me until I fell asleep. A nice lady told me that lesser Lord Kusanali must have been watching over me. Poor child. I hope that Savseru's festival makes him a little happier. This is quite similar to something I experienced back then as well. She's indeed a gentle god. There was this one time when I had a wee bite too much to drink and couldn't find my way home to save my life. Then, when I turned a corner, I could have sworn I saw a lesser Lord Kusanali. She was very tall and she had the most muscular arms. And she caught me when I, sip, when I slipped down and fell. The next morning, I found myself sleeping under a tree. I reckon that must have been her looking out for me. Hmm. I'm not sure this one has that much value as a reference. That was probably just a tree, right? These folks' records appended with the Tsar reference and opinions leave every page densely packed. Wow. Dunyarzad wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. 
Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about, she must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Done so hard. Hey! Where are you off to now? Stamina. Rip. <laughs> Gotta walk normally. I'm hoping the Arkham can bring her somehow back to life. It's Dinner's that's puppet. I'll feel better if I say this out loud. Thank you. Traveler? You must be exhausted. Come to think of it, we've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Denyarzad feels like an eternity ago. still remembers when we were sitting here and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Nilu's dance of Subzeru's. I can barely recall it now. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. Huh? What the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean? Denazar? Yes, Traveler. What is it? Uh... Oh. So she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come? Not leave behind any regrets. What? Where are we going this time? To the dance. To watch the dance of Safsarus. Yep. Continue to resist. We will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. How... How did things turn out like this? Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait, they're not reacting. 
Have they been scared stiff? Just like I thought. Oh, of course! If this is the sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this! Nope, they're just puppets. So they're just substitutes! What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? Hold a moment. What's up with those flowers? <laughs> like I said, I knew it like was her. Of flowers. It's just a shame that all the real body stars went extinct after her death. Yes. The Greater Lord brought forth new Padisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. Ah! That beautiful shade of purple! Aren't these flowers real Padisaras? Just like the ones from the legend? I didn't even notice! Tanyarzad, did you find these? But didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away? So, Al? Yeah. What's going on here? Nilo, close your eyes? Uh, huh? Imagine that the grain sage and his entourage are not here in front of you. You guys are acting weird. Just do it. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Hey! Yeah, they're gone. They, they disappeared! So Nilu's the host! What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore. But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage. It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assumed there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real potty Saras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? Correct. But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Well, there you go. Huh? How did you come to that conclusion? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? Wrong guess, but you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the First Sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dunyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the first sage. As if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife, lying next to him, said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City, and founded the Academia. 
<sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon. So she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. Well. But we really gotta wake up soon. Like the sage in the story! Now that Nilo is aware of it... I see. Well, it just so happens that today's Sub-Zero's festival is almost over too. Just gotta do the dance. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of sub zeros as beautiful as we can. Please, dance your heart out. over everyone I dedicate this to our God the dance of sub -Zerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilo's dance. Oh, she's right there. Traveler. Oh, my mom feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Uh, good morning, Paimon. Paimon's head feels super heavy. Did we oversleep? Do you even remember going to sleep last night? Don't tell me they forget about everything. Paimon thinks it was after the Sub Zero's festival. The Sub Zero's festival? Have we finally escaped from the Sub Zero Samsara? Oh, I remember now. Quick, take off your Akasha terminal. At the end of the dance, uh, Safsaros, I think I saw. Oh, she's gonna be dead, wouldn't she? She's not in her room. What happened? Well, let's go to the usual spot. Huh? The bench, what else, Paimon? <laughs> well, actually, never mind. Oh my gosh, she's right there. Well done, Traveler and Paimon. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the Subsaris Festival for me. I'm sorry, who are... Oh, like Catherine! It was not actually Catherine. It was, it was the Archon of. What is this thing? 
I forgot the element. Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream. And I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. Dendro. The Dendro Archon. You're actually Nahida, aren't you? Yeah. I kind of felt like Catherine was acting weird when we met at the Subzerus Festival. And... Dunyarzad, did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm, how about by the traveler's favorite bench? Nah. -ha. day of the Subzerus festival, I left the city and saw what the traveler had described. Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long though. It will return to its original dream, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible, but it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end! Not yeah. a moment too soon! A very happy ending. Huh? Smiling so happily. I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm. I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. All right. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. About what I saw in the dream at the Avida Forest. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree and a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said world and forget me. Yes. Yeah, so you do know. We've been wanting to ask you what that was about and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm, it seems like the Traveler established a connection to Ermensoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, Greater Lord Rukadavata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. A message from Greater Lord Rukadavata? We thought it was from King Deshret. King Deshret? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so what does the message mean? <sighs> I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. 
many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermin's soul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Ermin's soul? Oh, Tainari also said that Ermin's soul is sick! Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? But even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about, it seems like our search for you was all in vain. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Ermensoul. This is the only one left. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Ermensoul's fate, as well as to that's. Why do you look like Catherine? To be accurate, I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. Uh, how did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha Terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this Bionic Snishnayan puppet. Uh, oh, hold on. Did we just learn some deep dark secret? So Catherine is... No. Your Paimon felt something was <laughs> off about her. What about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people's? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Suristana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Suristana. Ostensibly for the sake of protecting me, but I've hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So the sages basically put their new archon under house arrest? How dare they! Why don't you teach them a lesson, Nahida? In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was omniscient and omnipotent. Even after her death, the Akasha is still empowering this nation. And I... I'm still really far away from being able to call myself the God of Wisdom. Moreover, the Academia is also more proficient at governing this country. My existence has little meaning. Well, to me... You are already an excellent Archon. Yeah, you got a lot of believers. Just look at the sub -Zero's festival. Everyone who showed up truly loves you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. But I honestly don't need physical freedom as long as I can connect my consciousness to the Akasha. Trying to find a way to save Ermensoul is my life's mission and top priority. I will work on that and try to live up to being a deity in the meantime. Every once in a while, I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. About the Sage's plan... There's never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path. ...and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange... ...if the Traveler hadn't broken the sub Samsara... ...the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha... ...but I couldn't find anything suspicious... ...and all the people of interest seem to purposely avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. I think they're deliberately trying to hide something. 
Oh, that reminds Paimon. In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Kainari to join some kind of project. Could it be related? Regardless, I need to first investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. But I'll have to be discreet, or they'll see me coming. All right. No one has realized the issue with the Akasha. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yeah. Yeah, it's been such a long time. No one's noticed something's up? It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the Sage's misdirection. Misdirection? The Sage has convinced everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru. Even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the Sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Besides, Greater Lord Ruka Devata must have created the Akasha in the hopes that it could be used to its full potential. That's why I've never come out strongly against this. <sighs> anyway, the perspective advocated by the sages drowned out any voices of doubt. By now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. Well, I have... I don't have any other questions. Got it! I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. <sighs> to be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project on the scale of the Subzeru Samsara in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. Leave everything to us. <laughs> yep. What a relief. <sighs> this is truly the most exhausting birthday I've ever had. Yeah, in 500 years, crazy. Mm -hmm. Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? No. I? Uh, maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up. I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Poor K3. We spent quite some time in Sumeru City, but ever since we last said goodbye to Lesser Lord Kusanali, we haven't heard anything from her. Oh, we can't just keep waiting around like this. Let's go find Catherine and pick up some work. Ad Astra Avisask. We meet again, you two. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm, let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and recite a love poem on stage. Uh, wait, say what now? And if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. Huh? What kind of commission is that? Uh, the audience will definitely have uh, a reaction. I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. In that case, please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Hey, that's not any better. Isn't that just asking for a bidding? Mm-hmm. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Uh, Paimon's gotta ask, just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurers Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. 
You are you are not actually Catherine, are you? You're Naida, right? <laughs> Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Ah, so it's Nahida. I would just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. When did you get into her head? Hmm, from when she said, add Astra out of Sosk. So it's been you this whole time? Uh, are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways. And I even had a really, really long dream. So the Akasa can't take away the dreams of gods. It was another dream about the Subzerus Festival. Except it was a happy one. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace. And everyone in Sumeru City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. And I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. You know, Nahida, maybe your dream is how the Subzerus Festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Yeah, it should. Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait, could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? No, no, we are pitying you. That would only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. But for the moment, our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzerus Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sages' activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh! Good point. Uh, sorry, adventurers. We're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Oh, yeah. While. Just take her. <laughs> Chapter 3. Act 3. I gotta go pee first, though. I guess we can rest a bit.
I still have a lot to do at the guild. How about you take a rest while I go back? Really bring the Knights of Favonius with you next time. I'm back. Let's continue our chat here. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. We could grasp someone close to the sages and question them. We're in the dark as of now. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After so then, all, no. Every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Okay. Ah. Uh, possess a key figure in the academia. I've already tried that, but all the key members of the academia, even the core of thirty guards. Intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the Sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet, but this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. Okay, well then possess a student and infiltrate the sage quarters. No way, that's too risky. Okay, there's... You mean it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Sumeru! I can't think of anything else. Hmm. Are we really out of ideas? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, Bill already according to a popular theory from the bahumana darshan of the academia rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal okay okay but aren't you the god of wisdom you don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously well i've been thinking that if i can't directly possess the leaders and if I can't get ordinary people involved, then I should find someone who's already involved, but hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm, that does sound like it could work. Oh, before coming back, we met someone named Al Haytham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the academia's back. They probably aren't in cahoots. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paima remembers now. Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? We ran into her basically every time the Subzero's Festival repeated itself. You could even say we're old enemies by now. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm hmm I've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sataria has always stood out from the crowd. 
She was born in the desert and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic gifts allowed her special admission into the academia and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light a part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. Those are Shatara's true uh, thoughts, right? From the sound of it, Shatara is just hung up on the research opportunities here. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? She's just running away from her problems. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Sounds exactly like the person we need. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the academia every 10 days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. That'll be our chance. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and to have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. Alright. Well, lucky us. This should be Sataria's favorite fortune-telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune-teller about Sataria? No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now is for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh. <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding his future. Can we get a fortune reading for him? <laughs> of course, of course. In that case. What the hell is wrong with the cats? Uh huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of you. Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. Hmm. Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, and brawling with the god of Electro. Do those count? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. Divine my prospects in health. Health prospects. No problem at all. Oh. <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. 
Your life shall continue on for... For... Huh? Many, many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. Harut, Marut, did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. <laughs> <clears throat> Admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Harut and Marut on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? Yep. Must be. It belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, so she still comes by whenever she has time. When they start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of her conversation. Ah, dear customers, would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. Speaking sure. of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. That's nice. You're making a living doing something you love. Hmm. So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Since he had already saved enough Mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. No problem. Rest easy, all our goods are sure to meet your every need. This should be our final stop. Sataria's always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything! I mean, she knows it all. <laughs> what are you expecting? It's my duty to protect Samiri's citizens, after all. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Ah, oh, that's right! I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Leeway Harbor and spent my entire childhood staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. But I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars, and I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning. Amazing. Uh, sure, but you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh. First I've heard of it. That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Well, 
Good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. Well, she visits a lot of places. So, was that everybody? Seems like mm -hmm. it, right, three? Three familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break through her usual sensibilities. I remember you mentioned that the Eremites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of King Deshret. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Oh, Paimon gets it now! You ought to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland! Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages! If King Desert were to criticize Atara's actions... Hmm. So, how do we set that up? Well, King Desert is long gone. And Sataria is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of King Desert's believers, she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. But, if we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her, her reaction would probably be very different. So, you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply they've already converted to the faith of King Deshret, and then convey our made-up will of King Deshret. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. You're going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Huh? Best of mm -hmm. luck? But we don't know how to possess anyone. I. That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Huh. That is pretty convenient. But why does he have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll try my best. Uh, if it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. Yeah, don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. All right, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. Might have to pass the whole day though. We'll see. No, this worked. Didn't it? No, it was the following there. So... There you go. I 
still have a lot to do at the guild. How about you take a rest while I go back? Oh, here she comes. Satari is here! Let's quietly follow her. Once she starts talking to her acquaintances, we'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. As for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Uh, Paimon's starting uh. to feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. Looks like they've already started talking. Let's find a hiding spot and get started. I don't think this is gonna end that well. right you really can't force anything when it comes to love and besides everyone around me has a very different background and outlook uh, are you still listening to me nabia oh of course i'm listening you were talking about troubles with your love life right i heard everything you said uh, okay then you just seemed a little distracted for a moment there <laughs> the cat. Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Uh, I think it was Hambru and Tamru. Hmm. Are oh. you sure? Those aren't ringing a bell for some reason. Oh, God. Well, Actually, they have many names. Which names I use depends on my mood. Uh, yeah. Huh, I see. I imagine that must be hard for the kitties, too. <laughs> <clears throat> so, which fortune do you want me to read for you today? You must have come for another echo of the divine voice of wisdom. Hmm... I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. A mess? Well, um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just oh want to get it over you're gonna miss it up. I hear you. No problem at all. Uh, the gods will reveal the truth. Um... The gods are asking, Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Why haven't I gone home? Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Sitaria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Uh, the gods seem to be truly upset. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. And if I may ask, Nabia, is there a specific god who's speaking to you right now? Hm. What an inconsiderate and naive question. The god who is speaking to me is, of course, the wisest and mightiest of all. King Deshret. G King Deshret? No wonder he would make such demand of me. Uh huh. Wait a second. King Deshret passed away a long time ago. Even though news of King Deshret's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the academia. How can King Deshret still exist in real life? Ah. King Deshret resurrection is a misinformation campaign. Excellence! I am King Deshret's most loyal believer. Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. 
I'm sorry. I must go now. Uh, wait! Ah, ah, ah. in a hurry she looked pretty upset too well done sataria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss to have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her that must have shaken her to the core the poor girl has Aww, no idea what that happened it seems like you understand human emotions really well after all all i know are some abstract tarava taught theories and in any case my time with you has shown a lot of them to be utterly useless. I'm still trying to make sense of everything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Bet. He's out of keys now. Right on cue. Let's get ready to possess him right away. It's okay. I just got caught up in something. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Gardening? But don't you hate everything to do with plants? I still remember getting mad at you for secretly throwing away the bonsai that I gave you as a present. Um, well, uh... You see, a friend told me that the secret to self-improvement is to work on things you're not so good at. <sighs> Fair enough. I didn't think that was something you would consider. Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling any better? Huh? Wasn't he nursing a leg injury? If I recall correctly, his strong arms had always been his pride and joy. Uh, he sprained his arm a while back while trying to show off his strength. I thought you'd heard. Actually, while we're talking about him, is he still living in Port Ormos? Yeah, he's been retired there for a while. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Let him know that recently, faith in King Deshret has taken root in Port Ormos and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper, and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. I don't want him to get into a fight with those King Deshret believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia, or King Deshret? The change uh, of voice was... I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert, yet you chose to betray King Deshret. And now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. Akeem, you don't mean... you've also become a believer of King Deshret? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Whoa! Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! Before I knew it, I really started getting into the role. You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Anyway, let's keep going. So, Shishan, have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like, as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? Um... Uh... Hmm. 
No, I haven't spent all my time studying the a attic. Wait, did you just say attic? I thought this place didn't have an attic. Also, don't you usually study in the basement? Uh, well, the restaurant recently added an attic. <laughs> I've been studying there because it has better lighting. <laughs> oh, right. Speaking of strange things, I celebrated the Subzerus festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Shishan, uh, uh, don't tell me that you've converted to King Deshret as well! What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. Did I push too hard, maybe? She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards! What should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Heretics? What kind of heresy are you talking about? King Deshred! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Miss Sataria, nothing is impossible. <laughs> you know my name? King Deshret is immortal, and all who defy him will one day pay the price. You must face the truth, Sataria. You tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of King Deshret, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise King Deshret? In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of King Deshret. Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? Gone crazy. It seems that no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of King Deshret. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. But no matter how much I may try to ignore or get rid of it, my guilt always comes back. It's not too late to turn back. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of King Deshret? Or are you the god himself? <laughs> That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? Great, we finally convince her. <clears throat> How much do you know about the sage's current activities? I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus Festival. 
But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. I've just been working to meet the Grand Sage's specified requirements. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city. And even the Sages are still quite wary of him. An outcast they even the Sages are still wary of? To fight against the Academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. The Sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Um, let me see... Uh, let's use the most primitive method. Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. All right, I trust you. So, uh, if I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Um, that'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. The Dendro Archon? That's right. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As the God of Wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. He's the one who deserves all the praise. Thank well, you, thank you. Be my best. Now that we've plans to meet again tomorrow evening, all we can do is pray for Sataria's mission to go off without a hitch. Pray? But if we're going to pray to the gods, aren't we just praying to you? God of wisdom and guardian of the <laughs> scholars? Me? No, no. The truth is the true guardian of scholars. I've always believed that. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurers Guild. For some reason I thought they had like a time scheme for this, like it wouldn't go this slowly. Just call her Naida. Shh. We're on a secret mission tonight, so we need to protect Catherine's identity. Yep, Paimon's right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep. Exactly, just what Paimon was thinking. I somehow doubt that, Paimon. Mm, anyway, enough about that. Let's just make sure to be on our guard. Speaking of which, don't you feel like something is off? Off? What do you feel is off? It's just a little too quiet around here. It's the middle of the night. Of course it's quiet. You're not getting paranoid, are you? I no, don't think so. I think he's right. It really is a lot quieter than usual. See? If you look around, there seems to be fewer people on the streets. I'm not sure if this is the case for the entire city, though. Huh. 
Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. I don't Maybe think that's the case. Figure out why things feel a little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Well, regardless, as long as you're here with us, Paimon feels a little safer. Huh. There really aren't many people out right now. Let's hope it'll be this quiet in front of the Academia, and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. Well, something is gonna go bad, right? What are all these people doing here at this hour of the night? Ah, the triumphant hero returns at last. And to a rather spectacular welcome. Even if I do say so myself. You're the outcast, expelled from the academia. Indeed I am. Although these days they tend to call me the doctor. Oh. If you're looking for your researcher friend, she has already been taken into confinement. With some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. Clearly, she lacks the degree of rigor expected of a true scholar. The people of Samir City! What have you done to them? I simply made some minor adjustments to their Akasha terminals. Now they can deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. <laughs> My experiment is a success. And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. Oh no! What should we do? These are all just regular people! Leave now. You need to get out of here. But that guy's a Fatui Harbinger! We can't just leave you here! Nor can I abandon the people of Samaru! appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind, you must be... the God of Wisdom. Yeah, well they know about her now. <sighs> this should be far enough. Paimon needs to catch her breath first. Uh, is the Hida going to be okay? We only made it out because of her. <sighs> she can jump between mines. Hopefully she'll be fine. Paimon wasn't counting on running into a new harbinger here. Let alone such a high-ranking one. That guy was number two. So scary. Mm, he called himself the Doctor. Remember, Tainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently. 
and that even the sages are weary of him. Yep, sounds like she must have been talking about the doctor. We underestimated the scale of this problem. Yeah, now that the doctor's in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the academia, they're in cahoots with the Fatui. But what are the Fatui after this time? Another Gnosis? We need to find a way to reunite with Nahida. Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city. But we can't just keep waiting around, right? Well, let's go find someone who might be involved. Uh, you mean... Yeah, let's go find... Tinati. Invited by the sages to work on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project! Even though he turned it down at the time, he might still know something. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville! Are gonna have a waypoint over there? Eh, uh, no, not really. Oh well. Actually, this should be closer. Hold it right there. A blonde-haired traveler and a floating fairy. We've got you, all right. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. <laughs> Are you mercenaries from the Corps of Thirty? Did you come here to arrest us? Corps of Thirty? We're nothing like those government lapdogs who don't even get scraps for their work. We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate in all of Sumeru. We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. The Outcast? An Outcast from the Academia? Well, that sounds like the Doctor. But why wouldn't the Doctor just send the Fatui after us? Well, maybe he's taking advantage of the Academia resources. <laughs> Still wasting time on idle chit-chat. We'll shut you up soon enough. Get them! Uh, you're up, Traveler! I got this. Following order. New punch. I'm going in! Huh? Think you can get away? <laughs> Illusion shattered! New punch. Probably won't be long before we see more of them. Yeah, looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. But this doctor guy seems like a pretty tough opponent. He knew exactly where to set up an ambush. Did he predict that we would try to find Kainari? Ugh, going up against smart people is tough. Anyway, let's keep going. Oh, this thing has no battery. I gotta go connect a new controller. <laughs> 